Joe Maurer celebrated his 30th birthday yesterday. Today, he looks to extend his nine-game hitting streak as he and his teammates take the field in Chicago. The White Sox are happy to be home despite the cool temperatures. They're hoping to see their offense heat up. Welcome to Fox Saturday Baseball. The weather is clear, the skies are bright, and a great day for baseball here in Chicago. Hi, everybody. I'm Howard David. Delighted to be alongside Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin and Joe Maurer. What a tremendous career. Well, yeah, Joe Maurer right now, he's red hot. But Joe Maurer has been red hot throughout his career. Three-time batting champ Joe Maurer. I don't think baseball has ever seen a catcher what Joe Maurer has been able to do offensively and also do a great job of handling his staff. When Joe Maurer is behind the plate, he does a great job of handling the pitching staff, Howard. But I think the biggest thing for Joe Maurer is his offense. 18 hits over this 19-game hitting streak. His work's going to be cut out for him this afternoon because it's facing Jake Peavy. Jake Peavy, the ace, I feel, here for the Chicago White Sox. Coming off major shoulder surgery three years ago, he has been red hot. He's 2-1, and one, very good ERA. Oh, by the way, he's 4-0 oh over his last four starts against the Twins with a 1.73 earned run average. The Twins and the White Sox are looking to rebound this season and get back to the postseason after missing out the last few seasons. Today, they meet in the first of 19 meetings here in Chicago go south side coming up next on Fox. Temperature at 41 degrees. And when it says it feels like 33, it's because it is. <laughs> Today's starting lineup for the Twins brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you've got to live Moss. Brian Dozier at the top of the order. You look at Maurer's numbers startling. Nine game hitting streak. Justin Morneau, Willingham, the power of that lineup right there. Parmalee has been moved up to the fifth spot of the lineup. And you see Oswaldo Arcia. He got his first base hit and his first at-bat. The next day they sent him down, they just brought him back up. 
And then Aaron Hicks, who's struggling as a rookie, brought up from double A. The opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Time for your own space pitcher profile brought to you by Avis. Jake PVC is record. He's been a little up and down this year, but this is not the wow. same pitcher that won the Cy Young Award. He doesn't have the same velocity. Now look at those numbers right there. 18 and a third innings, only one walk with 24 strikeouts. He's had two very good starts. He had one against the Washington Nationals a couple starts ago that was not Jake Peavy. But this guy right here, as I mentioned, this guy is the ace of this ball club. Chris Sale, a left-hander, had a great year last year. But this is the workhorse if he's healthy. Relies on consistent movement of his pitches. What does that mean? Means that he will adjust to the stuff he has today. He's had success against the Twins. 12th career start, 6-3, and 3.03 earned run average against the Minnesota Twin organization. Leadoff hitter Brian Dozier, the starting second baseman for the Twins. The first pitch by Peavy is in there for a strike. I'm going to use the word attack, and that's what Jake Peavy does to opponents. He attacks the strike zone. He will adjust as a game goes on, whether that big slider works or not. Hit of the air, wide of first base. This is playable. And gathered in by Kadurko for the first out of the ball game. Today's White Sox defensive lineup brought to you by Scott's, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. There you see the defense, and Diaz has moved over from center field to left with the injury to Viciedo, an oblique strain. Rios will man right, and Jordan Danks now occupies center field. You see the rest of the lineup with Jake Peavy on the mound, Kevin Jurin, Florimone, the double play combination, Gillespie at third, Canerco at first, and... Tyler Flowers, the catcher. Here's the first pitch on the way, and it is wide to Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer, what a story. 30 years old yesterday. Sixth all-time on the Twins hit list, passing Gary Gaetti earlier this season. It just catches the inside corner, and it's one and one. And if you've watched Joe Maurer at the plate, he's not afraid to go 0-2. He will make Jake Peavy probably throw four or five pitches and then take that one pitch probably to left field. Okay numbers. There's a fly ball down the left field line that goes foul, but yeah. seven hits and 26 at-bats, a 269 batting average for Joe Maurer against Jake Peavy. But he's enjoyed hitting against the Chicago White Sox over the last three plus years. Joe Maurer, 6'5, 231 pounds. Evie ahead of the count, one and two. The pitch just misses the inside corner, a little high. Joe Maurer went to high school in St. Paul, Minnesota. Same high school, not at the same time. There's a guy named Paul Molitor who had a great career, certainly, in the American League, not least of which with the Twins. And Molitor said of Mauer the first time he saw him, this guy's got the greatest swing I've ever seen. Yeah, at a Creighton Durham High School in St. Paul. A lot of great athletes have come out of that school. Drill to right field off the bat of Mauer in the game's first hit. Well, it looked like a slider that stayed middle in, and Joe opening up quickly. Joe, I'm going to say that 80% of his hits are the other way. Very seldomly will Joe try to pull that ball, but he's a type of hitter. Wherever that pitch is, he's going to try to get good wood on that ball, and that's what he exactly does. Now currently on a 10-game hitting streak. Josh Willingham steps in, 34 years old, out of Florence, Alabama. Hitting at 222 with a couple of home runs and five RBI. First pitch in there for a strike. Now, last Sunday in Minnesota, the Twins were snowed out against the New York Mets. They had an off day, excuse me, they played the Angels on Monday and Tuesday in cold weather. Wednesday was snowed out, cold out. Thursday they had an off day, and then yesterday here, another day of off for the Twins. So it's been a while for these guys to be on the field on a consistent basis. Now, Willingham, for some reason, he has not figured out Jake Peavy yet. He's 0 for 15 lifetime <laughs> against Jake Peavy. Mauer at first after a one-out single. Won't take much of a lead off the bag as Peavy gives him a look. 
Twins have some power in their lineup. Maurer, his job to get on. He can hit some home runs. He has two, but Willingham coming off a 35-hit home run season last year. Pitch inside. Count is even. A count now one and two. Josh Willingham in 2012, you mentioned 35 home runs, 110 RBIs. Only Harmon Killebrew in Twins history has hit more home runs in a season than Willingham. TV has a good sinking fastball, very good slider, and a changeup in his fifth season with the White Sox. PB ahead of the count. Pitch down low, and it's even a two and two. That's a slider right there, and Willingham able to lay off of that slider. PB came up with the Padres back in 2002, a three time All Star, won the National League Cy Young Award in 2007 when he was a 19 game winner for the Padres. Just saw Don Cooper there. Welcome back, Don Cooper, to the ball club. Flag down by PB goes to second. Nice play at second on to first. In and not in time, but they got the runner at second base. Nice play at second base by Keppinger. Yeah, Keppinger made a great play right here. PB trying to do too much right here. He has to go to his right to feel this ball, that little short hop, and then spins and then throws the ball in the dirt. Kevinger has to pick it and no play at first base. So the play going 1 4 and Willingham safe at first. Kevinger made a very nice play. Kevinger has played third and second so far in this early part of the season. And now Justin Morneau will step in. Oh, with Gordon Beckham up for because of that hamate bone surgery that he has they're looking for a second baseman and Keppinger getting the opportunity to play second Morneau happy to be healthy played 134 games last year two injury riddled seasons prior to that two out here in the first inning pitch wide and PV falls behind 2-0 to Justin Morneau at 31 years of age a Canadian 2006 American League MVP and a four-time all-star PB behind on the count. The pitch again outside goes to 3 0. Morneau played for Team Canada in the WC, WBC. And he is in the final year of a six year contract. Here's the pitch. Just caught the corner on the outside. Count 3 and 1. And a lot of times. Hitters will have that green light a guy like Justin Morneau against a pitcher like Peavy But I said he has so much movement Peavy's not going to give in to you He has allowed four home runs this year, but three coming in that outing against the Washington Nationals Willingham leads off first and the three one swung on and missed Great pitch on the inside and Morneau went after it Well the previous pitch the sinker away going inside and Justin with that big swing, you can still see the movement that PB has on that pitch. So Willingham will be in motion, three and two, and two out. PB sets and delivers outside. And Morneau draws a walk. The umpiring crew for today at home plate, CB Buckner. First base umpire Todd Titchener. You see Dale Scott at second base, and Bill Miller will be the third base umpire. Dale Scott is the crew chief in this quartet. As Chris Parmalee steps in for the Minnesota Twins, hitting 237 with a home run and five runs batted in. PV in a little bit of a jam here in the first inning. Runners at first and second, two out. And that walk to Justin, only PV's second of the year in 19 innings pitch. So control has not been an issue for Jake PV. Parmalee, only 25 years of age from Long Beach, California. Now with an opportunity to make some noise for the Twins in the top of the first. Yeah, Parmalee in his third season last year hit only 229 in 64 ball games. The Twins hoping to get some power off the bat of Chris Parmalee. Bounce it back to the screen, and PV way ahead now, 0-2. Well, you've seen PV. You know when he had the 96-mile-an-hour heater. Doesn't possess that anymore. So now you would think that he would play, he would pitch in his spots 
Well, we talked to Ron Gardenire and uh, and uh, uh, Robin Ventura about that, and they said this guy is is a guy that will adjust to the stuff he has, and it's usually the first two or three innings you'll find out what PV has or he doesn't have. Swung on and missed, strike three. A pretty good fastball right there. He gave the high hard one, and that ends the first inning for Minnesota as the White Sox come to bat. by Taco Bell. Sometimes you've got to live boss. Alejandro de Aza leading it off. Rios having a terrific season. Had a great spring. And Adam Dunn struggling. They have moved Dunn and Kinnard go back and forth from DH to first base to try to get him going. And you see Jordan Danks getting the opportunity to start at center field with the injury to Viciedo. Vance Worley, right-hand pitcher with a 1-2 and two record. You see his ERA, not very enlightening, but last start was the 12th. He only went one inning and gave up seven hits and nine runs, seven earned. Yeah, that was his shortest outing of his career. So Worley made some adjustments in his rotation. The Twins that uh, hope that uh, here this afternoon he can do a better job of that. He's making his first career start against the White Sox, and this being his 50th Major League start, has 18 Major League wins, very good ERA in his career at 3.79. Pitch to Diaz, foul away. Worley traded from Philadelphia in the Ben Revere trade. 11 months ago, he had a surgically repaired right elbow. Yeah, and Worley, you know, there are some pitchers on the club, and we'll go over that about the Twins a little bit later, about, uh, you know, guys coming off injuries. But if you follow the Twins the last two years, they need starting pitching. And uh, Worley was traded over. He was also traded over with a youngster named Trevor May that uh, his future looks pretty good in the Twins organization. They need pitching help in the minor leagues. But Worley is at the major leagues. He's a major league pitcher and hopefully making his first major league start can do exactly what uh, deep, deep to right field to the wall. I was going to say he would do exactly what the Twins want him to do, and PB does his attack. But right there, Piazza hitting his fourth home run of the year in the 20th for the White Sox. They can hit home runs. Now, yeah, first home run that Vance Worley has allowed this year. Ball left middle in. And this is what you want your leadoff hitter to do put yourself on the board early. And that ball right into that swing zone of Diaz. And he hits it over the right field fence. No doubt. So Worley gives up the homer on the first batter. And the pitch to Kepinger is in for a strike. Kepinger at 32 years of age from Miami, Florida. Signed as a free agent from Tampa Bay. 
He's been around, though, with Kansas City, Cincinnati, Houston, San Francisco, and the Mets. Pitch catches the inside corner, strike two. Yeah, Kepinger, as you mentioned, Howard, in his first season with the White Sox, a career 288 hitter last year with the Rays, hit 325 in 115 ball games. Pitch to Kepinger, catches the outside corner, and he's punched out by C.B. Buckner. Well, Worley picking up his uh, first strikeout, going outer half of the plate. Mauer sitting away. And a good pitch right there, says C.B. Buckner. So Worley, after giving up the leadoff home run to Diazza, his fourth home run in 16 games, gets Kepinger on strikes. And that brings up Alex Rios. Inside corner, delivered by Worley for a strike. Alex Rios. Six foot five, 210 pounds of power. Six years with Toronto, made the All Star team in 2007. Pitch misses inside. Yeah, Rios in his fifth season with the White Sox came over here. Toronto was kind of wanting to dump some salary, and the White Sox ended up saying, Hey, we'll take him. First couple years, not so good for Rios, but. He's coming off a great year. Pounded on the ground to short. Florimone across the diamond for the out. Today's Twins defensive lineup brought to you by Scotts, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. You see Hicks in center field. They brought him up from double-A, struggling with the bat, but not with the glove. And the rest of the uh, infield, Mordo, Dozier, Florimone, and Kluth. Now the catcher Parmalee Hicks I mentioned in Willingham around the outfield from right to left. A big shift put on for Adam Dunn as he uh, shortstop Florimone is now playing around second base. Dunn having a woeful beginning. He has been struggling and that's an understatement with six hits and 57 trips. But when he makes contact, that ball can fly off of that bat. 41 home runs last year. A big swing by Adam Dunn. You're saying the, uh, the the size of Rios at 6'5", Dunn <laughs> at six foot six, about 285. This is a big man. A lot of home runs in his career. 408 major league home runs. Pitch down low. He led the American League last year with walks with 105, but he also led the American League with strikeouts at 222. Wow. Yeah, that's nothing for Adam Dunn. He, he led the uh, National League in strikeouts three times, so it's kind of a swing and miss type of at bat for Adam Dunn every time he's up there. Pitch up and away. Count goes to three and one on Dunn. Vance Worley gave up the leadoff home run to Alejandro Diaz. Struck out Kepinger, got Rios on a ground out, and now trying to get out of this inning with any, without any more damage. Pitch catches the outside corner. Off-speed pitch, and the count goes full of three and two. Well, what the White Sox will see from Vance Worley is a sinking fastball when he's on. He'll get ground ball outs, a slider, occasional curveball, and then that changeup. And there's another pitch. Great pitch. Up the second strikeout. Great pitch by Worley. Caught the outside corner. As we have completed one, and Diazza has put the one on the board.
sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you Echo Boost, Fuel Economy, and a whole lot more. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. Jake Peavy settles into his second inning work. First pitch is a strike. On the way to Trevor Plouffe, the third baseman of the Twins, hitting at 227, as you see, with a couple of home runs. Pitches in for a strike. And Peavy gets out in front. The White Sox had the lead in the AL Central for much of last year. And down the stretch, things just kind of fell apart. Well, it usually comes down to starting pitching, and their starting pitching was not all that well. And Trevor Plouffe takes three pitches right down the middle. And a strikeout victim. Second strikeout for Peavy. Oswaldo Arcia. And you see the pitching coach of the Chicago White Sox. That would be Don Cooper, who we spoke with him before the ball game. He's a happy man right now. He's healthy, had stomach trouble. That kept him out of action for about 10 days. Yeah, put him in a hospital when they started that last road trip, and it's a bad road trip for the White Sox. They were three and seven. Cooper in the hospital. And, uh, good to be back. He said, you know what, for the last five days, I just wanted somebody to coach. So, Don Cooper, good to be back. First pitch to Arcia is in for a strike. Fouled off at home plate. White Sox last playoff appearance 2008 when they won the AL Central by one game over the Minnesota Twins. Arcia the other day, his first at bat got a base hit and then the next day was sent down and then they had to recall him back. Yeah, Wilton Ramirez was on paternity leave. Arcia had a chance to come up, got that first hit. And boy, he's swinging at that, boys. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jake Peavy. He has struck out three in a row of the Minnesota Twins lineup. Peavy's oh, thrown nine straight strikes. Well, it looks like uh, C.B. Buckner, that ball coming back over the plate. He's got an early uh, dinner date right there. That ball a little bit high, but be swinging the bat, boys. Three strikeouts for Peavy. That brings up Aaron Hicks, 24-year-old from San Pedro, California. Very slow start. Matter of fact, in one spring training game, he had three home runs as he looks at the strike. Seven straight strikes thrown by Jake Peavy. Well, like I said, Peavy does a good job of attacking. Aaron Hicks just two hits in 45 Major League at-bats. And the pitch is in for a strike. I remember a pitching coach told me a long time ago, a long time ago in high school, he said, just throw strikes. Trust your defense. <laughs> Well, when you strike out the first two guys, you don't need defense. Here's the 0-2, and it's hit the center field. Coming in on it, and almost making a big error there was Jordan Danks, who misjudged it off the bat. And so Peavy goes three up, three down in the second.
by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Paul Canerco will lead it off for the Chicago White Sox here on the bottom of the second. The Sox on top thanks to a Alejandro Diaz home run in the first inning off Vance Worley. Canerco, 37 years of age from Providence, Rhode Island, team captain of the White Sox. Hey, he's been a White Sox a long time, 15th season with the Chicago White Sox. First came up with the Dodgers and to the Reds, and then now a home here in Chicago. The only remaining player from the 2005 World Series White Sox team. And Worley ready to deal, in for a strike. Worley just 25 years old, signed by the Phillies in 2008, came up with them in 2010. Again, making his 50th Major League start. He'll one outside to Canerco. Canerco a six-time All-Star. Passed Frank Thomas this year on the White Sox all-time hits list for third place behind the great Nelly Fox and Luke Apley. Here's the 1-1, one -one. breaking ball down low. A far cry. The 2005 team, as you see the numbers on Canerco and where he stands, the all-time White Sox list. He had some home runs before he got here. 425 career home runs for Paul Canerco. And this guy has 48 home runs against the Minnesota Twins. Of course, they play each other 18 times. Usually, now it's 19 times. The 2-1 is fouled hard down the left field line. I started to mention before the 2005 White Sox World Series team, a far cry from the Go-Go Sox of 1960. But the last time prior to that, they had gone to the World Series. They lost that series to the Dodgers, but then again, the Dodgers had a couple of guys named Koufax and Drysdale. Yeah, they will do it to you. Short fly ball to right field and handled by Parmalee. Ford go further. Keys to the game is today's Ford's keys to the game. Uh, the keys for the Minnesota Twins at starting pitching, something that they have to improve. Uh, last couple of years have been frustrating years for Ron Gartenhire and the Twins organization. And one thing that Robin Ventura told us before the ball game, Howard, was that. He expects better defense for them to stay in the race and catch the Tigers. Everybody is looking at the Detroit yeah. Tigers. They have to have better defense. Connor Gillespie stands in and Worley delivers a strike. If you just tuned in, Alejandro Diaz has accounted for the only run of the game, a home run to lead it off for Chicago in the first. Yeah, Gillespie in his first season with the White Sox coming over from the Giant organization. Pitch inside low. Connor Gillespie getting the start today at third base. Keppinger moved over to second base with the injury to Gordon Beckham. Beckham out for a sizable period of time. Pitch up high and away. Fractured wrist had to be repaired for Beckham. I think the White Sox were hoping that Brent Morrow would take over at third base. There's Robin Ventura right there. A former gold glove winner, so he knows what third base is all about. Pitch out of the strike zone. The count goes to three and one. Robin Ventura, if I give you the names, Luke Gehrig, Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, Eddie Murray, and Robin Ventura, which doesn't belong? Uh, Luke Gehrig. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pitch foul down the third base line, out of play. I know where you're going with that, with grand slams. Right, most grand slam, he's fifth all time, Robin Ventura. Yeah, six time gold glove winner, Robin Ventura. So, yeah, I mean, he has no managerial experience other than what he got last year, talking to him. He, you know, he loves the game of baseball. He's been around the game, but uh, he wasn't a minor league manager before he got the job here in Chicago. And he gets punched out. Connor Gillespie does. 
Lowe's never stop improving game break out of town. Now it's time for the Lowe's never stop improving game break. Here's Matt Bastierzian. Howard and Bert, the Red Sox first game back at Fenway since their Patriots Day game shortly before the bombing at the Marathon on Monday. David Ortiz tying the ball game in the middle innings. However, since then, Santiago Perez has tripled in the go-ahead run for Kansas City. Two to one Royals in the seventh. And by the way, your audience will go back to Boston for Sweet Caroline a little bit later on in the afternoon. Back to you guys, Howard and Bert. Thanks, Matt. Uh, watch the ceremonies earlier today in Boston. Very, very heart-wrenching. Yes, yes, it was. And uh, great job by uh, the police force, the FBI, everybody involved in that uh, in that manhunt. Alexi Ramirez swings and misses. The count goes 0-2. You know, it just showed Boston and Kansas City, two clubs that are off to a pretty good start. Kansas City, eight and six. Boston, 11 and four, off to a very good start under manager Johnny Farrell. Pitch down low. Alexi Ramirez, 31 years of age, actually defected from Cuba, lives in Miami now. Finished second to Avon Longoria for Rookie of the Year honors. And the pitch hit right back up the middle for a base hit. Given a lot of tributes to Boston around baseball all week. Many players offer their thoughts and prayers on Twitter. Here in Chicago, the Chicago Tribune sports page out of the Boston area team. And in the Bronx, the Yankees paid tribute to their bitter rival Red Sox with the fans singing Sweet Caroline like they do in Fenway. Great job. Jordan Dex. Steps in, pitch up high. Only a couple of games for Danks getting the start today in center field for the White Sox. Yeah, he just got called up on the 17th. Danks last year played up for the White Sox in 50 ball games, but hit only 224. Two out, one on. Ramirez at first. Worley gives him the eye, now delivers to the plate, and it's Foul back to the screen. Jordan Danks, the younger brother of John Danks, who's currently on a disabled list and rehabbing for the Chicago White Sox, a left-handed pitcher, had that left shoulder surgery August of last year. They're hoping to get uh, John Danks back in that rotation around the All-Star break. Early set. Pitch inside. Count goes to two and one. One to nothing, White Sox. Thanks to a Piazza home run leading it off of the first. There's the factual information on Jordan Danks. Whirly looks at Ramirez. Not a big lead. Pitches outside. But the count goes to three and one. Pinch catches the outside corner and the count goes full at three and two. So Ramirez will be off well, and running. Yeah, there's been six strikeouts already in this ball game. So if you're a hitter, you have to watch and say, you know what, CB Buckner back there, he's calling strikes. So to take a close pitch like Danks did right there, got to be swinging a bat, and it'll be the same thing on this pitch. Count full, Ramirez off, and it's hit in the air to short deep shortstop and gathered in for Pedro Florimond. Chris Sale of the Chicago White Sox will join us in the next inning here from Chicago.
Pheromone steps in for the Minnesota Twins to lead it off here in the third. And Jake Peavy, who's been on target so far. Well, the last 13 pitches have found its way over the plate. 13 straight strikes for Jake Peavy. 31 so far in the ball game. Pitch swung on and missed. And he goes ahead. He's a machine. He's a machine. Put a quarter in him. My goodness. Nothing but strikes. Peavy way ahead of Florimone. Pitch catches the inside corner. Strike three. And <laughs> strikeout number four. Jake Peavy on target as we bring in Chris Sale, who pitched Thursday night for the Chicago White Sox in the loss at Toronto. Uh, Chris, as a pitcher, I mean, you went seven innings and pitched pretty well, struck out six. But even you had to be in awe of the way R.A. Dickey was in command of that game. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that was um, that was some nasty stuff he was throwing up there. I actually um, caught a glimpse of it, ran to the restroom and, and watched him throw a few of those from the um, on TV. And just the way that ball was dancing, it, there's no telling what it's going to do. Yeah, as a pitcher, thank God for the DH. Uh, oh, man, I'm glad I didn't have to face that. Hey, hey Chris, when you watch a young uh, a guy like, uh, you know, Jake Peavy go about his business, uh, you know, your last year was kind of your first full season, won 17 ball games, had a great year. Uh, how, you learned a lot from him? Absolutely. Um, you know, not only just... You know the, the game of baseball. You know, going out there and pitching and, and doing everything you can, but just you know, kind of the mental side and, and you know what what goes into pitching. You know, it's more than just you know rolling out of bed every fifth day and going out there and, and you know pitching. There's just a lot of work and a lot of time and effort that goes into it. And um, you know, it's the little things that that get you to where you want to go. Hey, Chris, I got to tell you, I don't know if you've been watching Jake Peavy, but he just threw a ball on the outside <laughs> that broke a string of 18 consecutive strikes he had thrown. Yeah, I was aware of that. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. That's you know that's who he is though. He's uh, he's a competitor. He's coming right at you. Everything he's got against everything you got. And, um, you know, he's, he's a great guy to have in the clubhouse, and I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to learn from him and, and have him uh, by my side. Hey, Jake. I know you're from Lakeland, Florida. You went to Gulf Coast, uh, excuse me, Florida Gulf Coast <laughs> University, where I I grew up. Right? I grew up right there. In, you know, living Fort Myers, but. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that program because you guys just became a Division One what four or five years ago. Yeah, it's a you know it's a newer, smaller school. Um, like you said, we just went Division One. My my first year there was our uh, our first year as a Division One school in the A Sun Conference. Um, big things going on down there. It's a great campus, great location. Uh, my wife and I we met there, and uh, I moved 25 miles south of there to kind of. Make sure none of those guys get too out of hand. <laughs> hey, Chris, uh, how about their basketball team? How about it? Uh, Dunk City. That's um, <laughs> that, that was so much fun to watch. Here's uh, a seeing eye base hit to left off the bat of Dozier. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was fun to watch. It brought fun and excitement down to that community and to that school. And, um, it's a very de deserving program, and uh, I, I don't see anything but great things coming in the, in the future. Here's the three things uh, we, we already talked about. Florida Gulf Coast, but you ended your first game in Tampa Bay with Devil Rays as a nine-year-old. Yeah, my uh, my uncle Robert took me to that game. Um, what, what, what fun time that was! Um, you know, the new stadium, the the, the new team coming in, and uh, you know, obviously myself being a you know baseball guy and growing up playing baseball, uh, I had a blast. I still uh, still have my 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 Rays jersey at the house that. Might still fit me, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, I had to get that because I got, got a little mustard on my, uh, my shirt <laughs> about the fourth inning. You know, a lot of people look at your delivery and what you've been able to accomplish. They say, boy, it could be the next Randy Johnson. You, did you take anything watching Randy Johnson pitch as a youngster going, growing up? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed every time I got to see him throw the ball. Um, still to this day, you know, I hop on YouTube and and you know, watch a you know, highlight reel of what he's done. Um, I mean, you, you really can't put into words what he did on a baseball field. It's it was unbelievable. It was great. Um, unbelievable competitor. You know, big tall guy threw hard, and you know, that's you know, kind of what I want to do is you know, leave everything out on the field, compete as hard as I can compete, and uh, you know, everything else will fall into place. Yeah, how, how about uh, Lakeland, Florida guy dealing with his cold weather? <laughs> Yeah, for 49 degrees it says. I don't really believe that, but yeah, we don't get that too often down there. 
Well, I know that Don Cooper, you know, really likes your work habit. And even though you lost the ball game the other day, as Howard mentioned to uh, to R. A. Dickey and, and the Blue Jays, you go about your business. I mean, you get upset, don't you, about losing a ball game? Yeah, I mean, you, you put so much time and effort into you know the four days in between, and you know these guys are coming out and every day and playing their hearts out. And you know, every time you take the mound, you know, especially as a starter, you, know, you get, get basically once a week to go out there and prove yourself and. You know, it's, it's a long five or long four days in between when uh, when it doesn't go right. And you know, these last couple of times it's been I feel like I've been waiting eight days to get out there. I mean, just can't wait to get back out there again. Chris Sale joining us here in Chicago. The White Sox with a one nothing lead with PV with a runner on first and one out against Joe Maurer, who had a base hit in the first inning. Pitch catches the outside corner and it's three and two. Hey Chris, thanks much for your time and good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, good Thank luck, Chris. Thank you guys. Appreciate having me. Left hand pitcher Chris Sale of the Chicago White Sox. Engaging young man. Very nice. And I, I wanted to bring that up about what Don Cooper told me about him and even Robin Ventura. That you watch a mannerism of a young man. Chris Sale only 24 years old. You can watch him go about his business. You know, he expects a lot out of himself, and, and that's that's a good thing. That he's he's probably watching Jake Peavy. He wants to be the ace of the ball club, but then you watch a guy like Jake Peavy go about his business, you learn a lot. Well, Doji was running on the pitch and now it took ball four outsides, and now runners at first and second, one out. In the top of the third inning for the Minnesota Twins facing Jake Peavy and Josh Willingham. Went into a fielder's choice his first time up in the first inning. Now well, Willingham still trying to figure out Jake Peavy 0 for 16 lifetime against Peavy. Takes and Peavy, if you're a pitcher right here, all you're thinking is keep the ball down, get that ground ball. He got the ground ball off the bat of Willingham in the first inning, but Peavy with the help of Keppinger got the force out at second base of Joe Maurer. PV gets ahead of Willingham. 0 and 1. Runners lead off. Pitch a little bit up high. Evens the count at 1 and 1. White Sox last year, 85 and 77, three games behind Detroit in the AL Central, and it was their division to win last year. They just went into a, a slump at the wrong time. Hit to short. Diving Scott unable to convert. Base hit and a run will score. Dozier comes to the plate with the first Twins run and we are tied at one. And finally Josh Willingham says, you know, hey, this guy isn't that tough to hit. He picks up an RBI as sixth of the year. PV did get the ground ball, but it's more up the middle. Romero stole for it, tried to knock it down to maybe keep Dozier from scoring. But the ball just out of his reach. Willingham hitting it sharply. Ramirez could not get to it. And Dozier scores to tie the game. Second time through the lineup. All three twins have reached base. Swinging and missing is Chris Parmley. I stand corrected. Just, uh, Justin Morneau. How can I mistake the two? <laughs> well, they both play first base. Just so Parmley's out right. <laughs> Now that puts PV ahead 0 and 1, running into some trouble here in the third inning. Score tied at 1, as you see in the upper left hand corner, and PV now trying to bear down on Bordeaux. Now the pitch inside. So Justin Morneau, even at the count, one and one, runners lead off first and second. And one out, the pitch misses wide to the outside. Jake Peavy making his 286 major league start. He has 122 major league wins. And the right hander set. This is the outside corner, and Peavy falls behind three and one. Well, after a 1 2 3 inning in the second, PB running into a jam here in the third.
Morneau with a couple of injury riddled seasons. Last year he played 134 games. His whole goal is to stay on the field. And the 3 1. Hit in the air, a high towering pop. Back a second. Uh, infield fly rule called right there. PV taking a little off that pitch, getting that pop up. Tonight, UFC returns to Fox as lightweight champion Benson Henderson puts his title on the line against top contender Gilbert Melendez, highlighting a full night of epic fights. Henderson versus Melendez for the lightweight title. Fox UFC Saturday is live and free beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern. I can see you as a UFC fighter years ago. Yeah, but with my brothers and sisters, yes. More my sisters than my brothers. I could beat them up. Sure. Well, barely. Chris Parmalee steps in, struck out his first time. Davey trying to work out of a jam. Pitch catches the outside corner for a strike. Count even at one and one. Jake Peavy, 2 and 1 on the year with an ERA of 3.93. Last Sunday, his last outing, he beat Cleveland 3 to 1. Yeah, longest outing for Peavy so far this year. The seven innings only allowed one run to the Indians. Peavy set, swung it foul back by Parmalee. Parmalee from Long Beach, California, as he faces Jake Peavy. Would you say that he is? I know Chris Sale would like to be with his Jake Peavy, the, the ace of the staff right now. Well, I think you have two aces. You know, you have a young guy that's 24 years old, Peavy at 31, a little more experience. Again, uh, you know, only maybe 30, 40 starts for, for Chris Sale and almost 300 starts for Peavy. Swung on and missed by Parmalee, and he struck him out. Peavy. Outstanding performance there. We'll be going to Boston shortly. Stay with us on Fox. Punch to the run on Jake Peavy, and there you see we are even at one heading to the bottom of the third inning. Tyler Flowers, the bottom of the order, and Alejandro De Asa, and Jeff Kepinger to face Vance Worley of the Minnesota Twins. 
Kyle Flowers, his first appearance, hitting 205 with three home runs. And Worley ready to work. Catches the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, Flowers, 27 years old. This is his fifth season with the White Sox because he was always kind of the backup catcher to A.J. Brzezinski. A.J. Brzezinski now the catcher in the for the Texas Rangers. So Flowers getting the opportunity. He has some power. He, you know, you mentioned three home runs. But uh, the biggest thing, can he hit big league pitching on a everyday basis? And time will tell for the White Sox and Tyler Flowers. Big shoes to fill. Pitch a little bit low. Yeah, I was really surprised that uh, they let A.J. go. Uh, he, you know, he was a free agent once before. He signed a two-year contract with the Chicago White Sox. But, you know, a lot of people maybe have, may, may have bad things to say about A.J., but personally, I like the way he handled pitching staffs. The guy was a 280 career hitter, you know, never hurt. And uh, but they went another direction here in Chicago. Flowers was in a one for 28 slump till Wednesday when he hit a three run home run. And the White Sox win seven to nothing. Here's the three one. Too low. Ball four and Flowers gets a pass. Yeah, you don't like walking that leadoff hitter, especially a guy hitting that is at 205 and, and hitting ninth in the lineup for a reason. Now you would never, of course, you pitched against the pitcher in the ninth spot. Oh no, I pitched against the designated hitter too. But uh, no, that that's kind of a a pitcher sin, I guess, of walking that leadoff hitter, especially someone in the lower part of the lineup. Alejandro Diaza, who put it over the wall in right field, his first time up in the first inning. And Worley now working out of the stretch, up high ball. Oh, actually, it's in for a strike. Yeah, Diaz in his fourth season with the White Sox coming over from the Florida Marlins. He's always been a very good career hitter, guy that you want to keep off the bases, good speed, surprising power. Already with four home runs this year, he hit nine all of last year in 131 ball games for the White Sox. Pitch catches the outside corner. He comes off, uh, Diaz does. 2012 was his best year. Now let's take you out to a special scene at Fenway Park in Boston for Sweet Caroline at Fenway. For Sweet Caroline. And look who's come out to do it. On his own and express his love to the people of this city today in person. Would you please welcome Mr. Neil Diamond. Thank you, Boston. What an honor it is for me to be here today. I bring love from the whole country. Oh, 
with only two. And when I heard it runs off my shoulders, how can I hurt when I'm here with you? Warm, touching warm. Reaching out, touching, touching me, touching you. Sweet to times never seem so good. I've been in line to be. No, no. All right, we're coming to the last chorus. Need to hear everybody sing it. Are you ready? Sweet Caroline. Good times never seem so good. A great moment in Boston and a Hall of Fame singer named Neil Diamond who recorded Sweet Caroline several years ago. A great job by Diamond, a great job by the city of Boston. And we're happy to present it to you on Fox. Yeah, God bless America. I'll tell you what, unbelievable. Flag and half staff as you see. To support the city of Boston here in Chicago. Runners at first and second, two out. And Adam Dunn hits one back to the screen. Here's what we missed. First, uh, Alejandro Diaz has struck out. And then Keppinger with a runner on first. Lofted one to center field. Aaron Hicks misplayed the fly ball. He thought it was, he went back on it and then came forward. It dropped in front of him, but he got a forced play at second. I, I thought that Hicks made a great deke on Flowers, who does not have good speed. Uh, the ball, Keppinger, this is a base hit right here. You see Hicks coming in, look like he's going to catch it, and then gets the force out at second base. Not too many times you will see an 8-4 put out. But uh, Hicks, I thought he did a good job of deking Flowers, and Flowers not the, big, the quickest anyway, but uh, Worley works out of it. And Vance Worley gets Adam Dunn for his fifth strikeout.
could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Scott's, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. Jake Peavy, five strikeouts, two walks, similar to his opponent. Vance Worley also with five Ks and two walks. I said in the first inning, Howard, you better be swinging a bat. There's been ten strikeouts, eight called third strikes. So, C.B. Buckner has been doing a lot of that right there. The right hand up for strike. Trevor Plouffe, speaking of strikeouts, has one of the five registered by Peavy. That in the second inning. And the pitch catches the outside corner. Peavy has been painting the black. Well. And Plouffe didn't like that call right there, but you see again the movement of that fastball from Peavy working outer half of the plate and then clipping the corner. Gotta love an umpire like C.B. Buckner. Well, how can he miss that? Come on. Come on, huh? <laughs> Outside the how, can so, how can someone behind home plate say, come on, up? Huh? When he's been calling almost everything, that a little bit off the plate. Down the pitch. But that yes, one is a strike. I don't think that Plouffe's got a leg to stand on. Tomorrow's Sprint Cup Series racing continues on Fox as Daytona 500 champion Jimmy Johnson will look for his third career victory in Kansas. Fox Sports coverage of Sprint Cup Series racing and the STP 400 begins tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Doesn't make any... Uh, hey, hello! <laughs> Gotta love that jersey and a beer in his hand. I thought that was me for a second. Yeah. And you couldn't be in two places at the same time now, could you? As good as you were. <laughs> Oswaldo Arcia comes in. He struck out in the second. Swings and misses. Although he might have got a piece of that one. Oswaldo Arcia was probably a little, you know, hard to imagine. He gets a hit. And then the next day they say, thank you very much for the hit, Oswaldo. <laughs> and they send him down. And then they bring him back up the next day. Yeah, Darren Masterani, another outfielder, he ended up uh, hurting his ankle again, re-injuring his ankle. So Arcia getting another call up, but just 21 years old, Arcia from the Venez from Venezuela. And the pitch, and he swings it up high out of the strike zone to the seventh strikeout registered by Jake Peavy, and only the third swinging strikeout for either pitcher. <laughs> Peavy going up the ladder with that moving fastball and Arcia swinging through it and he strikes out for the second time. So Jake Peavy now faces Aaron Hicks who's had his difficulties in the early part of the season getting untracked. Hicks was one right to short. Ramirez across the diamond in time. Three up three down for the Twins. As we remain top.
How are you guys doing? Very good. Thank doing you. great, right? Thank you. Hold them up for you. Yeah. It's One-one the score as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Dan Swirling who has struck out five and walked two. All five strikeouts, by the way, looking. Paul Canerco steps into the Chicago White Sox and welcome in Mike Pelfrey from the Minnesota dugout. Mike Howard, David Burt Blylevin, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. It's Canerco looks at the strike on the outside. So what? Tuesday. You post a win against the Angels, and now you're reckoned at two and one. Uh, good outing, although you went five innings. That was plenty. Yeah, you know, luckily they, uh, you know, the offense, uh, you know, was swinging the bat well that day, and um, you know they were able to put some runs on the board. And uh, I think the most disappointing. I don't think I threw great that day by any means, but uh, you know, every time they got a lead, they gave it like three in the third, and I gave it right back. Then they got another in the fourth, but. And then I gave that back, but uh, you know, luckily they just kept tacking them on. So uh, the offense definitely, uh, you know, helped me that day. And the bullpen came in, and they were uh, they were great. Hey, Mike, uh, the Twins have gone through some bad weather here early in the season. Three uh, rain outs, cold outs, whatever you want to call it, but it's pushed everybody back in a rotation. How does a starter prepare? I know you're you've been pushed back a couple of days. How are you preparing for your next start? You know, I think I think you just have to. You know, it is what it is. I don't think you can. You know, necessarily change that, and um, you know, you just try to arrange your, you know, bullpen, you know, to make it as normal as possible. Maybe you do a little more. Uh, maybe you'll throw two bullpens, or uh, you know, do an extra lift. But I think you just, it is what it is. You can't really change it. I know um, Vance is out here pitching, and you know, I couldn't imagine trying to, uh, you know, get ready for the game on Wednesday, get that canceled, and then you know, same thing yesterday, have that canceled. So uh, he's going on three extra days, and, and uh, so it's pretty tough. In this cold weather, how does a pitcher and a lot of fans are watching, you know, the cold weather that the Twins have had to go through, Chicago's had to go through that. Very cold here this afternoon, cold breeze. How does a, how do you stay warm out there? Well, you know, I like to think that you're the, you know, the pitcher's the warmest guy on the field. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, the cold, uh, I think you could necessarily, you can deal with the cold. Uh, but w the wind, I think, is what uh, is the toughest part. I think that makes the ball really, really slick. So you see, um, you know, guys go to the mouth a lot, or you know, chew bubble gum or something. Um, you know, trying to get a grip on the ball. But uh, I think when you're out there moving around, um, I think you're a lot warmer than you know, guys standing around the outfit or something like that. Canerco hits a slow roll to third. Throw across the diamond in time. Nice scoop. By Justin Morneau to haul it in. Hey, Mike, you're coming off the Tommy John surgery you had early May of last year. How uh, how is that elbow responding? Uh, it, it, it's great. Um, I've been I've been blessed through the whole uh, through the whole process. Um, you know everything's gone great, and, and I've kind of pushed it uh, you know to the limits to, you know through the whole process. And uh, you know luckily through the whole thing, I, I haven't had any pains or any or any kind of setback. So. Uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've been blessed the whole process, but uh, you know, I, I put a lot of work into it, and uh, you know, it's paid off. Mike, uh, let me ask you about the difference in market size. You pitch for the Mets in a big market like New York. You go to a smaller market in Minnesota. What's the difference in your mind? Well, at least I'm not. Uh, I haven't been crucified in the, in the uh, <laughs> you know the media yet in Minnesota. Um, you know, you know, coming into you know Minnesota, uh, you know, from New York, there's only a couple four guys in the clubhouse where. Uh, you know, in New York, there was 30, and you know, I felt like in New York, they always tried to, uh, you know, stir the pot a little bit, and try to get some, get something out of you. But uh, it's not like that in Minnesota, and it's a, it's kind of a relief, and it's, uh, you know, kind of refreshing. Boy, I just saw a nice defensive play by Trevor Plouffe for the second out. Hey, two great defensive plays. Yeah, look at him diving to his right, right there. Gets up quickly. Got that ball over to Morneau very quickly. Headed up the middle. Nice play by Floribone. Cross the diamond in time. Mike, thanks very much for your time. Hey, thank you guys. Take care. Stay warm. All right, top three of the Minnesota Twins. We are tied at one through four.
so far with seven strikeouts. Florimont trying to butt his way on, and Peavy gathers it in. Well, one thing that Jake Peavy has done, and I use that word again, attack. And boy, he's been attacking from the first inning on. Florimont trying to take the ball down with him, trying to maybe take it down that first baseline. Instead, he pops it up, and Peavy making the put out catch. By the way, he, as if you needed that to identify it, Jake Peavy was a gold glove winner last year. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's coming off a very good outing. You mentioned it earlier, Howard, he, in that Cleveland outing. He had 11 strikeouts in the seven innings. So far, seven strikeouts in four and a third innings. Look at that, a head and a count on nine of the 18 batters he's faced. And another strike one. Brian Dozier, one for two so far. Got a base hit in the third inning. It's not only getting strike one, it's going 0-2 on that hitter. Those are part of that effort to put across a run on Peavy. Look at 21 in the first, and then a couple nines. That third inning was his longest inning, 29 pitches, 70 total. Well, Worley last inning had a nine-pitch inning. Those are trying to, oh, this is an excellent bunt down the third base line. And having nowhere to go, Connor Gillespie just let it roll. Well, not much uh, Gillespie could do about that. Dozier, one of the better bunters on that ball club. We just saw Florimone try to bunt on Peavy. That's a perfect bunt down that third baseline with Gillespie playing back. So now with a runner at first and one out, Joe Maurer steps in. Walked and a base hit in the first inning. But now with two trips, runner off and with the hit and run on, here's the play to first in time, but Dozier advancing to second. Yeah, I think Joe right there, he wanted to hit that ball between third and short. Instead, it got right up the middle. And with Dozier do taking all right there, taking off. See, Ramirez has to cut in on the infield grass to get that ball. So Dozier at second base with two outs. So that's the second out of the inning. As Josh Willingham steps in, he is one for two. And PV set, pitch outside. Yeah, Willingham in his last at bat picked up the only run for the Twins so far on that RBI single. His first career hit against Jake Peavy. In 18 at bats. And Willingham steps out. Both pitchers have been pretty sharp. Willingham's been a nice find for the Twins, signing a three-year contract as a free agent coming over from Oakland. We mentioned the 35 home runs hit last year, 64 home runs over the last two years. So a guy that's really come into his own. He came up with the Marlins, spent time with the Nationals, and then one season with Oakland, and then signed with the Minnesota Twins. All singles for the Twins so far. Four base hits. Here's the 2-0. Inside, count goes to 3-0. On Josh Willingham. Willingham off an outstanding year last year. Well, Willingham will have the green light here if it's a pitch to his liking. Deep down the left field line, but hooking foul. And he had the green light. It, it ball just came running in on him. He pulled it foul. Watch the movement again of PV. I don't think he can throw a straight pitch. Everything has some movement. Fastballs always run in on right handers. Slider away. Change up. Dozier at second. Two out. The pitch is in for a strike. Saw the previous 3 0 pitch fastball in that had some movement. That right there, fastball away, just caught the corner. Willingham has been with Florida, he's been with Washington, Oakland. 
And now in his second year with the Twins. He set to deliver the full count pitch. Misses outside. And Josh Whittingham will go to first base. Runners at first and second, and Justin Morneau strides to the plate. Yeah, three walks for PV to go along with his seven strikeouts, 77 pitches thrown. Excuse me, 78. The Twins had three days off this week. So what did you do? Well, you waited for the next game. <laughs> Inside to Morneau. It's not too often that uh, there is snow in Minnesota in April, but I don't think they anticipated as much as there has been. Starting to warm up a little bit today. Morneau on the nose of a terrific play at second base by Keppinger to retire the side. Nice backhand stand by Keppinger. On Tuesday, the Fox Sports family and the entire sports world lost a broadcasting giant, Pat Summerall. Less is more approach allowed our imaginations to fill in the blanks. He was the voice that defined the NFL on television. Pat Summerall was 82 years of age. from his last start. Last start he went one inning. He's now into the bottom of the fifth here in Chicago. Stepping in for the White Sox, Jordan Danks popped out in the second. And Worley ready to work. Ball one. Worley has been sharp. I think it ain't so has Jake Peavy. Back to the screen off the bat of Jordan Danks. Count even to the ball on a strike. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, there really haven't hit been that many hard hit balls for either side. A lot of the base hits other than the Diazza home run. All of them have been singles. Worley in his last inning three ground ball outs. That's always good for a sinker ball pitcher. There's another ground ball out. This one to Dozier.
Today's game presented by the all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, which proudly supports the craft of baseball. One thing that pitching coach Rick Anderson and a bullpen, now new bullpen coach, Bobby Cuellar, have been working with Worley on is trying to lift that leg up a little bit. They looked at some old film of Worley when he was with the Phillies and said, you know, what this, what's the difference now compared to, say, you mentioned his last outing. He went into the second inning, but it was an ugly outing, as short as of his career when he gave up seven earned runs against the Mets. There's Rick Anderson. The pitching coach for the Twins. They want him to bring that left leg up a little bit more, and he kind of went to his old style delivery. And what I mean by old style delivery, he was just kind of just lifting his leg up a little bit and not really having any type of body movement, where now he's kind of be over that pitching rubber and kind of stepping back to create a little more of that get it to that balance point. How do I get to the balance point? That's what uh, they saw when he was with the Phillies when he first came up in 2010. Tyler Flowers came over from the Braves organization. So a little more turn and then that high leg kick. Flowers with a lazy fly, short center field, coming on, dropping in front of Aaron Hicks. Let's go to Matt Best Jerzyan at the MLB Network studio for a game break. Matt. Howard in Boston, Kelvin Herrera comes on from the Kansas City bullpen to protect the one-run lead with two out in the eighth when Daniel Nava straightens him out his fourth of the year. Three-run shot put the Red Sox up 4-2. However, Lorenzo Cain homered against Andrew Bailey in the ninth, and the Royals have two out in the ninth inning, down by a run. Back to Howard and Burton. All right, Matt, here it is 1-1 in Chicago. With one out, the bottom of the fifth. And Flowers, after reaching first on a base hit, Alejandro Diaz has struck out his last trip. It's went into the seats down the left field line in the first inning. A bullet into the right field bullpen. As the game goes on, and the weather has gotten a little chillier, by the way, how does this affect the pitchers? Well, you know, like like Mel, you know, Pelfrey said, you know, the pitchers are probably the warmest out there because they're always moving. What you want to do as a pitcher on a cold day is have a good tempo. Don't take a lot of time between pitches. Peavy does a good job of getting that ball and and keeping his defense, you know, on their toes more or less than on their heels. You stand around too much as a pitcher, get that sign, let it go. You don't want your defensive player standing around too long. Piazza foul back. Count remains at 0 and 2. You know, a pitcher has an opportunity. You blow on your hands, you move around. The cold is there, but it really doesn't bother you as much as it's a, you know, an outfielder. Everybody has their hand in their pocket trying to keep that right hand warm. Worley pitched the game in Chicago two years ago when the temperature was 97 degrees. <laughs> he probably had sleeves on back then. He's got no sleeves here. Here's the 0-2, misses up high. That's exactly where Joe Maurer wanted that pitch. He wanted to see if Diazza would chase that high fastball. Diazza with a home run, as we mentioned. That's the sixth time in two years that he's let off the game with a home run. He's got surprising power for a guy that uh, is, is not that big a guy. He kind of slouches over. One, two, misses outside. Diazza was not happy with C.B. Buckner the last time up when he struck out looking. Well, I don't think any hitter is happy at an umpire when you uh, call your third strike. Tyler Flowers at first. One out. Pitch again, high and away. The count goes full of three and two. Well, Flowers, not a lot of speed at first base. Joe McLuhan at third base going through signs. So we'll see if Flowers is off. He is. Pitch sky to the air down the left field line, trying to make a play. 
drops in front of Willingham. Starting Monday on the National Geographic Channel is a new series called Brain Games that will truly put your brain to the test. It's a roller coaster for your mind filled with challenges and games that will boggle and amaze you. It's Brain Game premiering this Monday on the National Geographic Channel. Any interest? Uh, As a participant. First, first you need a brain to play that game. See if they send flowers again here. He left on that on the last three two pitch. This will be the eighth pitch in this at bat for Diaza. As you're watching on television, you see the beautiful sunshine, but the temperatures have dropped to the low 40s. Flowers goes and a swinging strike. Diaza strikes out and it's punch him out, knock him out. A double play. And the score remains at one apiece. Well, pretty good pitchers duel yeah. here. Both pitchers have had command. Both pitchers have worn out the other side. Each team and each pitcher has had two three and out innings. Yeah, and that's what you want to do attack the strike zone. And both these pitchers have really done a very, very good job of that here this afternoon, especially on a cool, windy day here in Chicago. Chris Parmley steps in for the Minnesota Twins, top of the sixth. Takes a pitch in there for a strike. Parmley has gone down swinging in his both at bat, so he should look for a pitch early against Peavy and hopefully hit it hard somewhere. And now he falls behind. Uh, correction, they call that a strike. I call that a ball. Buckner's call was a ball. Looked like it might have been in, but I'm not the umpire. Anything close. I'll be the umpire up here. Into the air, a lazy fly ball in the gap, and it's going to fall in. Parmley on his way to second, and he's in with a double. Boy, your typical left handed swing right there. That ball down and in, and Parmley getting good wood on it, hit the double. You know, I always say you don't want to pitch left handers down and in because they like to do that. Exactly what Parmley did. Parmley his first double of the year. 
does have one home run coming earlier this year, but split the gap in right center. It's a leadoff double for Parmalee. First extra base hit, uh, except for the Diaz home run. First, the second extra base hit, first for the Twins. At all singles. Stepping in is Trevor Plouffe. We'll see if he's going to try to lay one down and advance the runner. What he has to do right here, Plouffe has seen, I think, eight pitches now. He has struck out twice. He needs to find a way to hit that ball to the right side of the field. You have to try to get Parmley in a pitcher's duel like this over to third. He is swinging. He fouls it off at the plate. Here's an interesting note. Parmley, before Parmley's double, he, Plouffe, and Arcia had six strikeouts between them. Yeah. I think that's what Parmley, or excuse me, Plouffe tried to do right here. Tried to wait back. And right off the mask. A flower. By the way, the extra base hit by Parmalee is the first extra base hit by the Twins since Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that was her last game. <laughs> Very good. You're right on top of it. Oh, huh? yes. All you need is a stat man. <laughs> Here's PB's 1 1. Foul back. And again, you see Plouffe trying to take that ball the other way, but now with two strikes, he pretty much has to try to just hit for himself. Very Plouffe earned his way, no question about it. After years of the minors, it's hit in the air, backing up is Ramirez, and he gathers it in. The Orioles and the Diamondbacks are two teams that recently visit the MLB Fan Cave. Check out all the latest cave happenings at MLBFanCave.com. Follow at MLB Fan Cave on Twitter and like it on Facebook. Arcia, Oswaldo Arcia steps in with one out and a runner at second. And it's hit out towards second. Kepinger in time to Canerco. And on the play, Chris Parmalee advances to third. Well, with there's, two out. there's that at bat by Plouffe. He does not advance Parmalee. You know, the infield may have had to come in in that at bat. So many things change. And with one out, first pitch, Arcia hits that ground ball to second. Now Parmalee at third, but there's two outs. Those are the little things you have to do throughout a long season to start winning ball games. Twins come into this ball game six wins, seven losses. Chicago seven and nine. And I'm talking to Robin Ventura. He was very, very happy to be off that road trip. Three and seven on that road trip. Yeah, what very kind to him. So Aaron Hicks with two outs. Rod Gartenheyer, the manager of the Minnesota Twins, 16 years. <laughs> and Phoebe ready to go. This is the outside. Hicks, a guy that was brought up from double A. And you see the average. He's having troubles with the bat early on. And yet he had a pretty good spring. Well, the day he hit the three home runs, they said there was, the wind was blowing out pretty good when he got that ball up in the air. He has had a tough time really against big league pitching a lot of times spring training and it's you know with the twins having to trade denard span ben revere they went into spring training looking for someone to take charge and it was hicks that took charge in spring training but it was just a matter of okay he had a good year in double a can he hit at the major league level so far two hits in 47 at bats so pb ahead of the uh, even on the count one and one against aaron hicks and I guess you, it's fair to say and probably obvious to say that he is pressing a little bit. Oh, of course, you get to that point, you know, now you start feeling for the ball. I talked to Tom Berdansky, the hitting coach for the Twins, about what Hicks is going through. You talk to Hicks, you don't see that he's two for 47. He, he's a good kid. He has a lot of confidence and ability. But when you get in that box right now, you're 23 years old trying to establish yourself at the major league level. Yeah, there's pressure. He's feeling it. Well, he was asked the other day about 
And he'd be lying if he said he wasn't feeling it. He said he, he could continue to play good defense and run the base as well. Hits will come. The well, pitch on the outside thrown by TV and the count goes three and one on Aaron Hicks. Well, you have to credit Ron Gardenhire and the club. They are not giving up on him. They're going to let him kind of hopefully work his way out of this. Number one pick by the Twins in 2008 out of Southern California. So Jake Peavy with Parmalee on third delivers the 3 1 off speed pitch. And the count goes full. So you don't see that in the minor leagues right there a 3 1 breaking ball. Peavy didn't want to make a mistake so he went to the breaking ball took something off. And it's a strike minor leagues 3 1 you'll see a fastball a lot of times up here. These guys know how to pitch Jake Peavy looking to throw his 94th pitch of the game inside and Aaron Hicks will take first. That'll bring up Pedro Florimon. Well, he tried to change up right there and Don Cooper going out. To talk to his right handed starter. Celebrate the craft of baseball for your chance to win a Chevrolet Impala and a trip to the MLB All-Star Game. Visit ChevyBaseball.com. I did not want to go another step further, Bert, without mentioning we, we saw a tribute to the late Pat Summerall a little while ago. I spent Thanksgiving two years ago with Pat down in Dallas, and I found him to be one of the most engaging, self-deprecating people I've ever been around in my life. His career speaks volumes, and yet he spoke much less than volumes. Well, anytime uh, we lose somebody like that, uh, you know, of course, our our thoughts and prayers are out to the Summerall family, but uh, the legacy will live on forever. Hicks draws the throw. So with Parmalee at third, Hicks at first, two out. Top of the sixth inning in a 1-1 game in Pedro Florimon, who's had a pretty good season with the bat so far. And now in a run-producing situation. Hit in the air. Short left field. Coming on, Deaza, and he gloves it. So that ends the top of the sixth inning, and we remain tied. Baseball game break Tigers and Angels in the afternoon couldn't have gotten off to a worse start for Rick Porcello nine earned in two thirds of an inning a big one here on Mike Trout's first career slam Royals and Red Sox an emotional ending to an emotional day as Andrew Bailey hung on for the save in the ninth Boston wins its first game back at Fenway after a difficult week in the area back to Howard and Burt in Chicago.
You know, you hate to see the Kansas City Royals uh, lose, but I'm happy for the Boston Red Sox and their fans and, and yes. the whole uh, state of Massachusetts. The future of this game is very bright. You saw Mike Trout with his first grand salami, and what about Bryce Harper in Washington? Mm -hmm. There are some good young players that baseball needs to step up, and they, they have. So we go to the bottom of the sixth in a 1 1 game, and the White Sox will set up numbers 2 3 and 4, Keppinger, Rios, and Dunn against Vance Worley, who has pitched very well. Yeah, Keppinger really got robbed of a base hit in his last at bat when Flowers at first base. He hit a line drive to center that we showed you that Hicks kind of deked Flowers, yeah. and Flowers not the quickest, you know, of a catcher. He got stuck between first and second, and Hicks threw that ball to second base for the force out. You do not see that that often, an 8 4 put out. And Keppinger has also flashed some great glove today as well. Popped up, straight back. Not close enough to Burt to reach out and try to grab the foul pot. You got to get one of those nets. <laughs> I need a mitt up here. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Keppinger, a lot of different clubs, seven different major league clubs that Keppinger has played for. The guy does not strike out. Always makes contact. Shot the third. Kloof makes the play. Fox Sports sends our sympathies to everyone affected by this week's tragedies, both in Boston and West Texas. Please support one far, uh, one fund Boston.org for those affected in Boston. Going back to Kepinger, one more thing. He had only struck out 173 times in almost 25 plate appearances at the major league level. So the guy puts the ball in play. Alex Rios. A walk in the ground out so far. Rios came in amongst the league leaders in several offensive categories. Well, let's take a look at Vance Worley. Last inning, I talked about Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, working with him and looking at old film on what they could do to get him back to getting that sinker down. Now, he's been getting some ground ball outs. And uh, the biggest thing for Worley and what they're looking for out of the whole staff is consistency. Something that the twin staff has not had a lot of over the last couple of years. So just a little mechanical thing. Step back over to the side. A little higher leg kick. Pitch wide. Let's take a look at it right here. He steps off to the side. Balance point. That's right there. That's the balance point. And they say he wasn't bringing up that left knee very far, so there's a little more opportunity. Rios sends it back to the warning track, and Willingham flags it down. You know, that breeze is blowing in from left field. That may have kept the ball in the ballpark. Rios gave it a ride, and the ball kind of hung up there, allowed Willingham to get underneath it for the second out. Probably the hardest hit ball since Diaz hit the home run in the first inning off of Worley. So in stepped Adam Dunn, who has struck out 22 times so far this year, twice in this game. It lifts this one high in the air and straight back. I think I need my glove on that one. That's a little closer to my side of the booth. A little closer. Never had great hands. <laughs> Adam Dunn, 0 for his last 27. The longest actually ties the longest drought of his career. Why, well, you know what? When you get Adam done, and it's he's kind of his career has been that way, he can carry a ball club and then he can strike out a lot. He has that uppercut swing that you saw right there. 41 home runs last year for the White Sox. Even though he hit 204, he still drove in 96 runs. He is built like a tight end or a defensive end in football at 6'6", 285. Here's the 0-2. This is the outside corner. Worley thought he got him. Yeah, you can use the word monster for Adam Dunn. He's a big man. And again, when he makes contact, it goes a long way. Yeah, he, chances are you don't find it. No. So we reset. Here's the 0-2 from Worley. This is hit on the ground out to the second. They played the shift against him, and the shift works as they throw him out. 
Fox Saturday Baseball will return to Chicago after a word from your local Fox station. Chevrolet. Top of the order for Minnesota, Brian Dozier, who has gotten a couple of hits off of Jake Peavy. Yeah, base hit between third and short. Then in the fifth inning, he bunted down that third baseline, got an infield base hit. High and tight to Dozier. That's some activity. In the Chicago White Sox bullpen, Donnie Veal starting to heat up. Yeah, 95 pitches for PV coming into his seventh inning of work. That's up high, and the count goes 2 0. Oh. You know, in today's game, Howard, if you can get seven innings out of your starter, that's kind of like a complete game in today's game, and that's what PV's trying to do for the second straight time. In there for a strike, 2 and 1. Actually, a decent crowd. When you consider the weather in Chicago right now, it's not that. I mean, it's in the low 40s. 22,417. Not bad. <laughs> well, they love their baseball here in Chicago. It's, it's a great sports town. There's no two ways about it. The Blackhawks in hockey are, had a tremendous string early in the year. They're going to the playoffs. Chicago Bulls are in the playoffs. The White Sox trying to get back to the postseason. Just missed the outside corner, and the fans wanted that, and so did Peavy. Well, the way C.B. Buckner has been calling strikes this afternoon as an umpire behind home play, you would think that was a strike. Full pick on the umps now. Here's the full count. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And Peavy picks up his eighth strikeout, his first strikeout since the fourth inning. Strikeout number eight. Now it's time for the Just for Men Auto Stop Full Proof Stat. There's PV right there. I'm laughing only because I see PV talking to himself. That reminds me of somebody that's sitting up here in a booth after you throw a pitch. You talk to yourself. Come on, you know, he, he, he's a guy that it shows emotion out there. I like it. That's Joe, why I like watching PV right. pitch. You know, he he'll talk to himself. He'll yell at himself. He expects a lot out of himself. That's why he's one of the aces on this staff, along with Chris Sale. Joe Maurer, one base hit, two official trips, also a walk. 
Now a check to swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Well, Bill Miller, the third base umpire, saying that Maurer went. Again, Peavy, 0 and 2, ahead in the count. Peavy way out in front, 0 and 2, the pitch low. Time now for the Ace Helpful Player Profile, brought to you by Ace, the helpful place. Well, Joe Maurer coming into the ballgame, a nine game hitting streak. He added to that with a base in his first at bat. Back to back four hit games on Monday and Tuesday, the last time the Twins played those games against the Angels. And it doesn't matter who he plays against. He has great career numbers against everybody. Well, Jake Peavy almost lost his toes on the rocket through the middle, but hit by Maurer. That, that was on an 0 2 pitch. Wow, this is what good hitters do. You saw Joe foul off a pitch, and then PV comes in with a sinker. Good pitch. But Maurer, again, getting good wood on it. He keeps that head down, watches that ball almost make contact with the, with the bat, and gets his second hit. So Josh Willingham will step in. He's got a base hit today in two official trips. He's also walked. Last couple innings, Jake Peavy has found himself in a little bit of trouble in elevating the pitch count. Pitches in for a strike. You see the pitch count at 106 now. Well, I hope he doesn't blow up. Fourth straight start that Peavy has thrown over 100 pitches. The most he's thrown in a ball game. His opening assignment back in early April through 107 against the Kansas City Royals. Oh, and one on the hitter. Down low to Josh Willingham. Sixty nine strikes. Good strike to ball ratio. Two to one. Count even to the ball on the strike. Mauer leads off first. Al back. And out of play, Matt Lindstrom now joins Veal in the White Sox bullpen. Well, one thing that early on, both these clubs have very good bullpens. The Twins hitters today, one for ten with men on base. So only hit was by Willingham. Out straight back. And Josh Willingham faces a one and two count. The true value of a hitter. Can you deliver with men in scoring position? They don't have it now, but Maurer is on first. Well, when a club is playing well, of course, they will do very well. When they struggle, you'll notice that's one stat that, uh, you know, clubs struggle with is getting the big hit in situations with runners in scoring position. When you go out on the mound before a game, and using yourself as an, as an example, there are some days when you feel better than other days. Mm -hmm. Have you ever come into a game where you didn't feel well, a little bit of a cold, and as the game wore on, you knew you had your stuff? Those are you games you great. probably pitched really well is when you, you didn't have your good stuff at the beginning because you knew you had to pitch. Here's the one two down the left field line and foul. I learned it early eight eight and I was 19 years old. My first start ever at Fenway Park. I was warming up in a bullpen from after my bullpen side piece getting ready for the game. Buck Rogers Bob Rogers a great catcher for the Angels. My manager in Anaheim told me I was pitching for the Twins. He was a bullpen coach. I, he, he, I had the best stuff he ever saw. I went one third of an inning. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Here's the one two swung on and missed strike three and an important strikeout for Jake Peavy his ninth of the game. Yeah strikeout number nine. You know a lot of the strikeouts came early for Peavy that were called third strikes. That's a nasty slider right there. Looks like a fastball and then just dips away down and away. We're going to get a visit. Out to the mound. 
And I think Robin Ventura is going to come out and visit him and take the ball. Well, maybe he's going to talk to Peavy right here, give him a chance. Well, if you're Peavy's talk, trying to talk his way out of it, and he did. Yeah, he did. He's going to face yeah. Justin Morneau. I think Robin Ventura he came out and wanting to find out exactly how he was, but I think in the back of his mind, I've got that lefty ready in the bullpen against the tough. Left handed hitter and more no, but I think PV talked his way out of it. So Veal will just kind of throw lightly. Well, you got to trust the veteran pitcher, don't you? Well, especially a guy like him. This guy's a bulldog out there. You know, you can kind of see, I think, when a manager walks out there, the eyes of that pitcher or something that he might say is like, what are you doing out here? Leave me alone. Morneau skies this one down. On the third base side. And it will go just into the dugout. And avoid Gillespie's glove. I almost saw what that ball did right there. Just the breeze that's here. It's almost a circular type breeze. We saw Rios. I mean hit a smoker out to Willingham that stayed in. But the ball's kind of. The wind's kind of making that ball come back toward the infield. Jake Peavy trying to work out of a little bit of a jam here in the seventh inning. Keep the game even. Here's the 0 1. Foul back and out of play. Jake Peavy, a 19 game winner, and he won the Cy Young in 07. He was masterful. An ERA of 2.34. <laughs> 34 starts in that year. No complete games, though. I'd have to say Trevor Hoffman probably helped him out quite a lot that year. Peavy had more, uh, more no swinging. He's ahead of 0 2. Now, is there a, a clock that went off in your head? You're ahead of 0 2 on the hitter. Uh, maybe I could waste one here. No, I, I never minded giving up a hit 0 2. As long as I had in my mind, I'm attacking the strike zone. That right there, he tried to go up the ladder with more, Justin, and you just followed it straight back. Here's the pitch swung on and foul tipped at the plate by Morneau. You do not like giving up hits 0 2, but I don't want to start aiming and all of a sudden I get the count to 3 and 2. So it remains 0 2 on Justin Morneau. Flowers giving the signal. Here's the pitch lifted. Into short center field and it is caught. Jordan Danks on the run. Nine left on base for the Twins.
said is Neil Diamond. That was in Boston today at Fenway Park. That was in Boston today, but we are here now in Chicago. But you're hearing Neil Diamond's voice. We made the hit with Sweet Caroline. Touching me. Very nice. Nice Very job nice. by the uh, Chicago crowd. The only thing that was a little unnerving to me was Neil Diamond was born in Brooklyn and he was wearing a Boston Red Sox hat. <laughs> So we go to the bottom of the seventh, and the White Sox send up Canerco, Gillespie, and Ramirez. Canerco, 0 for 2 so far in the ball game. Yeah, PV with 117 pitches, so his afternoon is probably done. And Vance Worley would like to match that. Canerco hits that ball foul. Worley now at 91 pitches. Starting his longest outing as a Minnesota twin. He went six innings in his opening day start, which was the opening day for the Twins, opening day starter for the Twins. He lost that ball game four to two to Justin Verlander, but he went six very good innings. Canerco with the distinction of hitting a home run in five consecutive games. He did that two years ago. And he has a place in Sox history because of that, which I'll elaborate after this pitch. This is hit in the air to right field. It drops in front for a base hit. Today's game presented by Chevrolet. By ADT Security Services, always there. And by Scotts, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. Well, for the White Sox, that's only hit number four against Vance Worley. Good piece of hitting by Canerco. Here's a guy that has over 400 RBIs. That's why he's a career 288 hitter. Just taking that pitch the other way. We'll oh, see if Gillespie's going to try to lay one down to move Canerco up. Runs are at a premium today here in Chicago. And Gillespie swinging away down the left field line and running out of room with the three players in pursuit. I mentioned before about Canerco. Has a distinction of hitting a home run in five consecutive games in 2011. Only five players in Sox history have ever done that. The other four, Greg Luzinski, mm -hmm. the ball, Ron Kittle, <laughs> Carlos Lee, and of course, Frank Thomas. Uh, Ron Kittle, and some of those were probably off of me. He owned me. <laughs> There's Frank Thomas. Future Hall of Famer, Frank Thomas. What a tremendous player. Pitch on the outside. I mean, with Thomas, you just look at the size of the man and the power and the grace with which he played. He, uh, he could do it all. You know, defensively is a little bit of a liability. What really helped him as a designated hitter rule, you know, let him play a lot longer, which has helped a lot of guys continue their career. Canerco leads off in the pitch. Why? Well, the count goes to two and one. Worley, as you see, approaching 100 pitches in this game. Now, interestingly enough, unless Veal is going to be the next pitcher in or Lindstrom, neither warming up in the White Sox bullpen. Yeah, Rick Anderson, Ron Gardner looking at the lineup. A couple guys warming up for the in the bullpen for the Twins. Looks like Brian Dunsing. Is the left hander out there? Here's the 2 1 foul back. If you're just tuning in, the White Sox only run Alejandro de Asa's home run. Yeah, and Casey Fiend, the right hander. <laughs> Canerco inches off first base. He doesn't take a big lead anyway. Pitches in for a strike, and Gillespie gets punched out. Well, I think both three starters, if you've been watching Worley and and Peavy, both have that fastball that will come back over the plate. You see the movement right there, 
And C.B. Buckner gets another opportunity to ring somebody up. For Worley, that's strikeout number seven. So Ron Gottenheyer looking on as Alexi Ramirez steps in for Chicago. Worley delivers. Sky high. Infield pop. Morneau foul territory. Family of baseball sends heartfelt sympathies to everyone affected by this week's tragic events. Support OneFunBoston.org as they help those affected by the recent tragedy in Boston. A great city. Spent four years, lived up there for four years in Boston. Beautiful city. A great historic city and some of the greatest Italian food in history. <laughs> in the North End. Two out on the on the outside to Ramirez. Ramirez with a little bit of pop in his bat. Oh, this is Danks. I stay correct. Ramirez is the one that just popped out. Jordan Danks. Uh, this will be pitch number 100 for uh, Vance Worley. Worley threw 101 pitches in that outing against uh, Detroit on opening day. So Worley draws even on the count at one and one with two away here in the seventh inning. Hits a bit of the premium. Twins have six. Red Sox, uh, the White Sox rather, with four. Infield and over the shoulder attempt by Worley, and he's unable to handle it. A difficult play at best. And it might have been an easier play for Florida coming in from short. Well, they always say you want your pitcher in, it's in the middle of a diamond to stay out of plays like this, but Danks gets jammed. And the ball pops straight up. Worley keeping his eye on him. May have heard something from Florida, but like Florimone, it might have been a tough catch for him. He probably would have been able to catch it, but instead, well, tipped off the glove, it looked like. I don't know if it's glove at all. Well, it was a poor replica of Willie May's great catch in 1954 <laughs> in the World Series. Well, and uh, Jordan Danks gets an infield base hit with that swing. Well, that's the shortest hit is in, in his major league <laughs> career. That's for certain. Well, you know, Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, went out just like Robin Ventura, the manager, went out to talk to Jake Peavy in the top of the inning. How are you doing? This time it's Rick Anderson. And they're going to give Worley an opportunity to get through this inning. There are two outs with a couple of runners on. And light hitting Tyler Flowers stepping in. Flowers really struggled at the beginning of the year, but they worked on his stance a little bit, a little bit of an open stance to allow those hips to come through. Well, Flowers does have a base hit in this game. What a five for the White Sox. See the feet are a little bit closer together and a little open stance. They felt he was locking himself in a little bit. So Worley goes way out in front, 0 and 2. Here's opening day right here. You see the wider stance to the left. Now they have them opening up just a little bit, standing more upright. Well, Flowers is six foot four. Mm -hmm. So is that to his advantage? That's kind of the way Frank Thomas kind of stood at the plate. This is lifted in the air, straight away center field. And Hicks gloves it to put the inning over for the Chicago White Sox. They come up empty, lead two on in the seventh.
Presented by Chevrolet. Howard David, Burke Flylevin here in Chicago in a 1-1 ball game. And the White Sox have a new pitcher. Matt Lindstrom steps in, right-handed pitcher, who picked up his first win on Tuesday in Toronto. He faces Chris Parmalee. Yeah, outstanding number so far for Lindstrom making his eighth appearance seven and two thirds innings three hits no walks with six strikeouts in his first season with the White Sox last year with the Orioles and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Parmody foul down the right field line Lindstrom is working on a scoreless streak of seven and two thirds to start his White Sox career over the course of two seasons. He's got a streak of 12 and a third scoreless innings. Well, Lindstrom with that fastball, very good fastball, hard slider. He'll throw a split finger. And there's that hard breaking ball right there. That may have been the splitter. Well, bullpen has been outstanding. You can see the combined 1.74 ERA. That's best in the American League. And the Twins bullpen right behind him. Pitches in for a strike. Jake Peavy was tough on the Twins. He got into a couple of jams, but found his way out. Yeah, I mean, 117 pitches, of course, a season high, but four walks, nine strikeouts for Peavy. Both starters pitched outstanding. Seven innings of Peavy, six hits, four walks, and as Burt mentioned, nine strikeouts. Veal up again. And now Nate Jones, the right hander, getting up. Here's the 3 2. Fouled away. And yet the Twins bullpen remains quiet. Well, maybe now that's just starting to get some action now. The Twins bullpen will follow that. Yeah, I would imagine Vance Worley's afternoon has done 104 pitches, seven very good innings. It's like uh, Jared, Jared Burton. Burton, yeah. yeah. Full count. A Parmalee. And did he go? No, he did not. He is going to go to the first base for a walk. And the first walk of the season for Lindstrom. Tonight, the UFC returns to Fox's lightweight champion, Benson Henderson, puts his title on the line against top contender Gilbert Melendez, highlighting a full night of epic fights. Henderson versus Melendez for the lightweight title. Fox UFC Saturday is live and free tonight, beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern. So the Twins with an opportunity as Trevor Plouffe comes in, squares the button, lays it down. The play goes to first. And Gillespie throws him out. Well, this time Trevor Plouffe has asked to bunt. Remember in the sixth inning when Parmalee let off the game with, or that inning with a double, Plouffe swung away trying to move him over. He ended up hit, uh, popping it up. This time asked to bunt, able to get it down and puts Parmalee at second base. Oswaldo Arcia will step in now with a runner at second, the go-ahead run at second. Arcia has his 0 for 3 on the day. A couple of strikeouts in there. Robin Ventura out with Veal warming up. Looks like he'll be coming into the ball game. So the White Sox making a pitching change will return.
Veal comes on, and you see he's ready. He pitched three days ago against Toronto, and there'll be a pinch hitter for Minnesota. Yeah. Ryan Domit will come in to pinch hit for Arcia, who was called back to the dugout to counteract the left-handed pitcher. Yeah, Donnie Veal went through that Tommy John surgery in 2010. He's just kind of coming back from it. Uh, last year had a pretty good year in the White Sox organization. 24 appearances at the major league level. Very good 1.38 ERA. Veal's first pitch is high and tight. Doman hitting 200 right now. 10 base hits and 50 trips. Yeah, Ryan Doman, a switch hitting, a switch hitter. Three hits in 12 at bats as a right handed hitter. He went. No, the first base umpire said no. Well, that had me reaching. <laughs> So Dolman ahead on the count two and all. Parmalee at second and the pitch is in for a strike. Yeah that's the best pitch that Veal has right there the breaking ball his fastball can be a little erratic. But all in all he gets that gets ahead in the count he can throw that breaking ball over at any time. As he did right there two and all. Veal set pitches inside. And the count goes to three and one. There's that erratic fastball. See the fastball run inside. Might have been a little cutter. So Veal behind on the count, three and one. Parmley leads off second and the pitch. That'll draw a walk for Ryan Doman as a pitch hitter and leads runners at first and second and only one out for the Minnesota Twins. Robin Ventura on his way out to the mound again. Well, he had Jones warming up, so Veal came in to face one batter, and it'll be Nate Jones coming in. So things are starting to heat up a little bit here in the eighth inning. Boucher bringing it to the booth. For the Chicago White Sox, as Robin Ventura trying to use bullpen by committee to get out of this inning. Yeah, here you have a you know a starter, Nate 
Uh, Jake Peavy goes seven innings and has taken three relievers to try to get out of the eighth inning. Nate Jones coming in for the seventh time in his second season with the White Sox. Last year, outstanding out of that bullpen. Eight and zero oh in 65 relief appearances with a 2.39 ERA. Interesting matchup here going against left-hand hitting Aaron Hicks against left-hand hitters so far this year. Jones has given up three hits and eight batters. That's wide outside. Yeah, Jones has a very odd delivery. He almost brings that straight arm straight up, almost like the Statue of Liberty holds it for a split second. And he's got a good fastball, fastball that can be clocked in the upper 90s. Look at him kind of hold that ball back and then release that ball toward home plate. Runners at first and second. Pitches up high. Yeah, fastball at 95 miles an hour. Jones, 27 years old, signed by the White Sox in 2007 out of Northern Kentucky University. Well, you can see the motion you're talking about. Yeah. And now he's fallen behind 2 and 0 with runners at first and second as they lead off. Pitches in for a strike. Jones actually, his record against the Twins lifetime is 2 and 0. Well, what a rookie season he had again last year. 65 relief appearances. Did not lose a ball game out of that bullpen. Eight, no. And he's up against a hitter that has been struggling in this his rookie season. Aaron Hicks and the pitch up high. So right now, Robin Ventura is sitting in the White Sox dugout asking one of his coaches to pass the Tums. <laughs> Well, Hicks should get a fastball here. A little harder to see now with the uh, center fielder in daylight and home plate in the shade. There's a strike. Hicks taking all the way. The count goes full. You see that as that sun sets here at U.S. Cellular Field. Pitcher and hitter in the shade, but still that ball as that pitcher releases it coming out of that backdrop that's in the sun. Critical pitch here now for Nate Jones. He is ready and delivers. And it's inside. The sacks are full of twins. Wow. And all because of base on balls. Lindstrom led off this inning by walking Parmalee. Then Donnie Ve uh, Ve Thiel came in. He walked the batter. And now Nate Jones walks the batter. Going to get a pinch hitter. Ramirez is going to come in and pinch hit. Wilkin Ramirez. So he pinch hits for Florimo. Wilkin Ramirez in his first season with the Twins. Not a lot of major league experience, but. As a pinch hitter, one hit in three at bats and drove in a run. Out of the windup. It's a ball. They appeal to Todd Titchen of the first base umpire. He said, no, he didn't go. And I think that's the right call. Yep. Very close. In a tie game here in the top of the eighth inning, and the bases are loaded for Minnesota. Here's the pitch. This time it's a strike. Well, the White Sox coming off a three and seven road trip. They started the season in fine fashion, went four and one to begin, and then had trouble on the road. One and one. Pitch outside to Ramirez. Boy, not even close right there. Jones kind of all over the place. Of course, these two teams in the Central Division, they will face each other 19 times this year. And last year, of course, now with the, uh, you know, the uneven or the, you know, 15 teams in the American League, yeah. 15 in the National League, the unbalanced schedule.
That's a lot of times to see the same team. Well, Last year it was the White Sox that controlled the Twins. They won 14 of the 18 meetings. But they lost 12 of 18 to Detroit and Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So Nate Jones behind two and one on Ramirez. It's hit. Hey, great play. Force it home. What a play by Tyler Gillespie. That is a Robin Ventura type play right there. That ball looked like it was going to be trouble down that left field line. Look where Gillespie's playing him off the line. He leaped for it. And then on his knees throws a strike to Flowers at home for the force out. A tremendous play by Gillespie to save a run or more. And so the bases remain loaded. However, now it is two out and Brian Dozier, who's had a pretty good day so far. He got two hits in four trips against Jake Peavy. Well, that was an outstanding defensive play. Well, Jer uh, Jones will work out of the set. And Dozier, pretty tough out today, looks at a strike. Well, the Twins have had their problems getting men in with a lot of base runners. I think they're one for 11 with men on base. Already they have left nine left on base, and the pitch is hit down the right field line over in foul territory, giving it a chase and a one hand grab made by Paul Kenarko. Great play at third, great play at first, and the White Sox are out of the inning. Lowe's never stopped improving. And by the all new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, which proudly supports the craft of baseball. Well, we saw that great play at Gillespie, you know, to get the force out at home. But look how far Paul Konerko had to do. Nice running catch. Good concentration for the final out. If you're, uh, if you're Nate Jones, you uh, you have some yeah. dinners to buy right there. Eduardo Escobar goes into play shortstop for the Minnesota Twins. As Florimone was hit for in the top of the inning, and now Alejandro Deaza against Jared Burton. 
Yeah, Jared Burton uh, having a, a solid season so far, coming off a real good year in his first year last year with the Twins, making his seventh relief appearance. It seems like yesterday when Alejandro Diaz hit a home run to the lead it off for Chicago. So now Burton is charged with the responsibility to keep this game even. On the outside corner, strike two. Let's go back to the first inning. The first hitter that Vance Worley faced, it was Diaz, and he gave the White Sox an early 1-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning. Twins tied it in the top of the third, and that's where we're at. So now Burton ahead 0-2. And Diaz swings and misses. Actually, it was dropped at the plate, but the tag out and the routine play. So one up, one down for Burton and the Twins. And that brings Jeff Kepinger to the plate. Hasn't done anything at the bat today, but he's made some outstanding defensive plays. Yeah, that's uh, that's that changeup right there by Burton. It's a nasty changeup. With that wide open stance, takes it inside for a ball. Worley, seven innings, five hits, one run, walked two, and struck out seven. Temperature <laughs> takes it up high, ball two. Fastball at 92 miles an hour. Burton came up with the Cincinnati Reds in 2007. He went through right shoulder surgery a couple years ago. The Twins did a good job. They didn't want to pitch him back to back. Hit out to left field. And deep. But the wind might have held that one up. Well hit by Kepinger. And it's just a long out. Almost the same type of swing that Rios had in his last at bat. Well, here's Alex Rios. And what a talented man this is. He can hit the power. Made the all-star team at 07. He can go deep, and he can run. Yeah, Rios in his fifth season with the White Sox. This guy is a five-tool player. He went through that spell with the Blue Jays and, and then about three years, but he has found himself again. Had a home run swing there, but came up empty. Had some back trouble in the spring, but has gotten off to a pretty good start so far in 2013. Looks at that one outside, and the count is even of the ball on the strike. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth for Minnesota, the heart of their order, their power people, Mauer, Willingham, Morneau. Two and one on Alex Rios. A big man at 6'5", 210 pounds, 32 years old from Puerto Rico. on the outside and Burton falls behind three and one. Well now you have the meat part of the lineup the home run hitting guys and Rios Dunn and Conurco. So you want to be very careful here. Oh he's pitching now with two out. Pitch and Rios There's that change up. He has as much confidence in that change up as he does his fastball. Fastball situation, of course, Rios looking fastball, and he pulled the string on him. Rios way out yeah. front. So now he leaves Rios guessing now, counted full three and two. He looks it right down the pipe. Strike three, and Rios is out. We go to the top of the ninth coming up.
PV and Worley match serves until each was replaced. Diazzo let it off with a home run for Chicago, but since then the White Sox have been blanked. Yeah, if you're a, a fan of a good pitch game, both starters pitched outstanding. Now the bullpen. Jesse Crane, the fourth reliever used already by Robin Ventura. Crane in his eighth start or eighth appearance of the year. Former twin. Spent seven seasons with the Minnesota Twins from 2004 to 2010 in his third season with the White Sox. Mauer looks at one inside. Crane had a distinction about eight days ago against Cleveland. He reached his 500th appearance in 500 innings pitched and 400 strikeouts all in the same day. <laughs> and a distinction of being sixth all time amongst Canadian born pitchers in terms of games pitched in. Bauer looks at a strike and it's two and one. Joe Maurer turned 30 yesterday. The game was postponed, so we got a chance to celebrate a little bit. Here's the 2 1. Just missed the inside corner. Well, Crane, 31 years old. Played his college ball out of the University of Houston, signed by the Twins in 2002, their number two pick. 3 1 is too low, and the walks continue to haunt the White Sox pitching in relief. Yeah, all four relievers that have come into the ballgame so far Lindstrom, Beal, Jones, and now Crane have walked a batter, the first batter they face. <laughs> So Josh Willingham will step in. He's got a single in three trips. He's knocked in the only run for the Twins. That coming in the third inning, an RBI single that scored Brian Dozier. On the outside corner for a strike. Jesse Crane, as Burke mentioned, the fourth pitcher out of the bullpen for the White Sox after Jake Peavy had pitched extremely well. For seven innings. Bauer leads off first. He draws a throw. So one thing Jesse Crane has very quick feet, very quick move to first, and Joe Mauer not a base stealer. Not a big lead from now off first, and the pitch is foul tipped. Well, the big slow curveball right there. You know, we talked uh, a little bit earlier, Howard, about you know coming as a starter. You know, you get a chance to move around, but you got to realize these guys in a bullpen have been sitting for seven, eight innings. You know, it, 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 you say it's nice out there, but you can see that the all four starters, relievers, excuse me, for the White Sox have come in and walked that first batter. As soon as Jesse Crane let that last pitch go, he's already blowing on his hand. So it's very cold out there. The 0 2. Down back towards the screen. A play will be made and it's gathered in by Tyler Flowers. And Ventura getting some exercise today is coming out to the mound. You know, they have a very good bullpen, but I think he's going to use everybody here in a couple innings. I believe that's Matt Thornton that's uh, warming up out there. So he's it calling is. for the lefty. And Robin Ventura getting most out of his bullpen today. <laughs>
469th appearance in a major league game. Yeah, making his seventh appearance on the year. No record, an ERA at 4.5. Two lefties coming up with one out here in the top of the ninth inning is Morneau and Parmalee. So Ventura using his fifth reliever. And the pitch. Out off. And if I'm a betting man, I would have to say that Matt Thornton deserves a good chance he's going to walk Justin Morneau right here. Every reliever, all four relievers that have come in have walked the first batter. Want to hedge the bet. <laughs> Morneau has not had success against Thornton hitting 167 career. Well, Thornton's always had a good fastball, hard slider, and an occasional changeup. There's that good fastball, great location down and away. So Thornton getting ahead, 0-2. The Twins have had a quiet week, missed three games due to postponements. The White Sox come off a three and seven, ten-day road trip. And the 0-2. Long away. A slider missing down and away. Thornton, 36 years old. He was originally the Mariners' number one pick, Seattle Mariners' number one pick back in 98. In his eighth season with the White Sox. Come on, man. Here's the one two. Fouled away beyond third. Thornton, you can see no sleeves. He grew up in Michigan. He's a used to this type of weather, I guess. Oh, so are you, supposedly. No, I was born in Holland. <laughs> I meant that I live in Florida. <laughs> and the pitch. Lofton in the air to left field. Deaza puts it away. And that's the second out. This is the NFL. So that will bring. Chris Parmalee to the plate. He is one for three. He has the game. He has the Twins' only extra base hit with a double in the sixth inning. See the lineup card for the White Sox. So now a little confab between Thornton and Flowers. Two away here on the top of the ninth inning. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, the White Sox will have numbers four, five, and six, Dunn, Canarco, and Gillespie. But first things first, and that hit him. Ouch. That got right on the hands, Parmalee, on a cold day. Might have caught him on the elbow on the right, on his right elbow. Not sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of players wore that pad on that elbow that exposed to that pitcher. And Parmalee, he does not have that pad right off that mm. elbow area. Boy, that's got to be smart on a cold day. Oh, yeah. You felt this pain. Yes. So they're looking after him now. Right Tony. now, he doesn't need yeah. any freeze to freeze the area. Well, Tony Leo, one of the trainers, out to. Uh, See if he's all right, and Parmley says he's fine. So Trevor Plouffe will come to the plate against the lefty throwing Thornton. Uh, I guess instead of walking somebody, Thornton just said, "To heck with that! I'll hit somebody." And he hit it with a 94 mile an yeah. hour fastball. So Trevor Plouffe. 0 for 3 and a sacrifice. Hit on the ground out to second base. Keppinger gobbles it up and throws him out. So the White Sox with a chance to win at the bottom of the ninth. Coming up straight ahead.
for the ball to Brian Dunsing, left-handed yeah. pitcher. Yeah, Dunsing uh, coming in. This is his uh, fifth season with the Twins. Sometime starter now this year in that bullpen, making his seventh relief appearance. He's going to face Adam Dunn, Jeff Canerco, and Connor Gillespie. And Dunn looking for his first hit of the day. He's 0 for 3, two strikeouts. That ball got away from the catcher. They say he did not go. That was not a foul tip. Adam Dunn looking to be a hero for the Chicago White Sox. Catches the inside corner, counts even to the ball on a strike. Yeah, the breaking ball right there at Dunsing has a fastball, quicker breaking ball, almost like a slider. That last one, the curveball. Well, you see what Dunn has faced, the longest drought of his career, 0 for his last 28. Swings and fouls it back. When you've been as accomplished, particularly from the power point of view, as Adam Dunn has, this wears on you. Uh, he's had so many at bats. He realizes that it can turn just like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like Aaron Hicks that's trying to find his way. This guy has so much experience, so many years at the major league level that he knows he's going to, you know, catch up with one sooner or later and get back into that good slump or well, get get out of it. They say he didn't go. Wow. The appeal was uh, I, I can't de determine if Buckner maybe appealed to third or first. He never appealed. He called it. He called it. Yeah, it sure looked like, you know, our angle that he went. So Dunsing comes in and picks up a strikeout. This on that hard slider, the harder breaking ball. Yeah, and I guess C. he Buckner said it if he went. So that's the third time today that Adam Dunn has struck out. And now Paul Canerco, who is one for three today with a base hit in the seventh inning. Remember when we sat down with Ron Gartenheyer before the ball game, he said, you know, in a close ball game late, I do not want to see this guy come up, Paul Canerco. And he mentioned Dick City, he's hurt me a lot. 48 career home runs against the Twins over his career. Pitches cross for a strike. Kepinger waits on, or rather Gillespie waits on deck. So Dunsing ready to go. Here's the 0-1. This is the outside corner. Paul Canerco, 37 years of age from Providence, Rhode Island. The team captain of the Chicago White Sox. And as solid a major league pro as you'll find. Six-time All-Star. Pitch, hit. Into left center field for a base hit. And the White Sox have the winning run on first. That Canerco picking up his second straight hit. And for the White Sox, they're six. Hits are tied, runs are tied. And we're going to get a pinch runner. Tyler Green is going to run for Canerco. Here's the uh, Burger Kings plays of the game. Here's one. Yeah, Gillespie getting the force out with Mason Lona, and then Paul Canerco going deep into foul territory for the final out. That all coming in the eighth inning. So now, Connor Gillespie steps in from the port side against a lefty thrower, and Tyler Green running for Canerco. Good speed, inching off the bag at first. Pitches outside. Gillespie has struck out twice and grounded out in between. Yeah, Tyler Green, 58 career stolen bases and caught 28 times. Actually, that first uh, time he uh, kind of went back to first base as Dunsing lifted that right leg up. 
And the pitch hit down the right field line, but foul. The Twins have had the better of the opportunities today. They've left 14 men on base. Count even and a ball and a strike to Cotta Gillespie, who made one for me. You saw the play just a moment ago that he made behind third and on his knees threw the runner out at home on a force play. And now he'd like to chip in more with his bat. The critical situation. Dunsing ready to go. Count even to the ball and the strike as Green inches off first and draws a throw. You know, Howard, you mentioned that the Twins have left 14 on. You know, they had all those couple rain outs yesterday. It was rained out, cold out. They had the off day. Then that last game of the Anaheim series. On Monday and Tuesday, they combined for 16 runs and 27 hits in those two ball games. But I think Jake Pavey, Pavey had a lot to say about the offense today for the Twins. He shut them down. So, Dunsing keeping his eye on Green. Do you dare send him? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm watching Green as he's leading off. Every time Dunsing lifts that right leg, he heads back to first. So he does not really have a good feel of uh, what Dunsing's going to do. This one okay. comes to the plate and hit in the air in left field, drifting over along the left field line. He's running in, in foul territory. Did he hold on to it? I don't think yes, so. Yes, he did. Oh, he, he made did. the catch. Great play by Willingham well, on the run. Again, we've seen that ball go down that left field line and kind of drift toward foul territory. Willingham looked like this ball was going to stay fair, and then he had to kind of kick it in at the last second and right against the railing. That makes a nice catch. Well, we've seen a few flashes of leather here today on both sides. And Dunsing is through. He got the job done, and now Fine comes in. Casey Fine will come in, a right-handed pitcher for the Minnesota Twins. Casey Fiend is the eighth relief pitcher to enter this game all since the eighth inning. Yeah, Fiend making his eighth appearance out of the bullpen. Seven innings so far, three walks, six strikeouts. Well, Fastball slider. 
There's a fastball right there to Ramirez. So Tyler Green representing the winning run at first base, but two are away. And as you see, Ramirez has been here before. Should he reach base, Jordan Danks is on deck. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. Strike right two. Yeah, good hard slider by Fien. Fien in his second season with the Twins, 29 year old. Came to the big leagues with the Tigers back in 2009. Everybody blowing on their hands. <laughs> Very cold down on that field. Two teams needing a win. As we're in the bottom of the ninth with two out and 0-2 on Ramirez. Ramirez who finished up runner up for rookie of the year honors to Evan Longoria. Currently living in Miami. And you can understand why he might be a little chilly right now. <laughs> Fien set to go one and two on Alexi Ramirez. The run is going. Swung on and missed. Strike three. The inning's over. So Fien gets the job done as we have completed nine innings. here in Chicago at the ballpark. How about these options? Well, you know, it is extra innings. I know I'm hungry up here. Look at all the different. Uh, How about that? Big, oh, <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> I think you uh, mentioned the word Tums. No, I mentioned that that will put a snap Earlier. in your, that will put a snap in your trunks. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> well, we're going to get another relief. No, I like that. Look at that. Cool. That looks good. Little sausage. Yeah, Hector Santiago coming in. The sixth different pitcher after Jake Peavy left after seven innings. Here we are in the tenth inning. Bounce straight back. Well, Santiago against American League hitters. They're hitting 0-37 against him. And you did some defensive changes too. 
Tyler Green, who went in to run for Canerco, takes over at second base, and Jeff Kepinger goes to first. It just misses the strike zone. There you see Kepinger, who has had some good defensive play so far, and very versatile. I mean, he could play about anywhere on the infield. Santiago, hard throwing left handed, finds the inside corner. Well, Ryan Doman in his second at bat. He pinched hit in the eighth inning and walked. That walk coming against Nate Jones. Now the 2 2 and hit down the left field line, but foul. Excuse me, that uh, walk came against Donnie Veal, uh, not Nate Jones. All the relievers walk somebody, just yeah. take, pick a name. Pitch it down the left field line, curving it is fair. Dump it on his way to second. As Diaza tosses it into the infield, and the Twins have a leadoff double here in the top of the 10th inning. Well, Santiago left a pitch up right there, and Dump it, a line drive. Take a look. Do you see Flowers wanted that ball inside? It was middle in, but Dolan opening up quickly and lining that ball down the left field corner. So Ryan Dolan with a very important hit to lead off the 10th inning and a double at that, the second double for the Twins. Robin Ventura can only wonder. Well, his fifth double of the year for Dolan. Now Aaron Hicks, I'm sure, will be asked to butt right here. This is the first time he's turning it around, going from the right side. Mm -hmm. yeah, Gillespie, the third baseman, in almost on the grass. Kippinger has to charge. Pitch is inside. Hicks, you see the struggles he's had offensively. The Twins are one for 11 with men in scoring position, and one for 17 with men on base. So Hector Santiago now comes to the belt. Pitch is butted, but right into the glove of Jeff Keppinger. So Hicks's woes continue, and Doman remains at second base. They jabbed at that ball right there. As a as a hitter, you want to lay that ball down on the ground. And Hicks popped it up. So Eduardo Escobar, who went in to run. Went into the defensive purpose now comes up to bat for the first time. Escobar, Escobar a former Chicago White Sox, getting an opportunity to maybe have an opportunity to beat his former teammates here. Came over in the Francisco Liriano trade last year to the Twins. So the White Sox get a little bit of help with Aaron Hicks unable to keep the ball on the ground in the in a bunning situation. Santiago now with one out to his credit behind one and all on the hitter. Escobar. And the pitch inside. Escobar born in Venezuela. In nine games, you see what he has done. Yeah, switch hitter. Good infielder. Good change up right there by Santiago. And Escobar way out in front of that one. It's like a screwball type change up. He turns it over. Ryan Dozier is on deck for Minnesota. Yeah, Santiago, 25 years old, born in New Jersey, signed by the White Sox in 2006. Two and one pitch. Down back to the screen. Doman at second with a leadoff double. A lot of chilly people here. <laughs> Pass that blanket up here, please. Here's the 2 2 from Santiago. Count remains at two and two. Good swing right there by Escobar. 
After that screwball had him way out front, he challenged him with two fastballs, and Escobar right on that fastball. He's got other thoughts on the mind, like, Daddy, when are we going home? <laughs> Here's the 2 2. Hit on the ground after short, slowly hit. Across the diamond, scooped up, and up, down. Wait a second, he's safe. And meanwhile, the run's going to come home. Doman alertly taking off. And Kepinger thought maybe he missed the tag. He went after the runner, not realizing that Doman was coming in from third. Well, that was a low throw right there. Tried to get dug out by Kepinger, but I believe that the ball ended up hitting Escobar as he's running down that line. Softly hit. Ramirez comes in. He has two choices. He goes to first. It one hops Kepinger, and then the ball got away. And Domit alertly scoots around. It's considered E6 yep. on the throw and no RBI, yeah. but doesn't matter really to Ron Gartenheim. As you see that ball hitting Escobar right in the buttocks and then going up that first baseline. That's good uh, base coaching right there by Joe Barbara too, because you have to get that runner's attention. Dolman took a chance and really went to third. I mean, Ramirez could have gotten a lead runner, but instead he decided to go to first, and the ball short hop Kepinger for the air. So the Twins have broken the ice, and I might say that literally. <laughs> Two to one, Minnesota. Yeah, Ramirez will get the air, only his second air of the year at short. And the Twins get a break. So Santiago now. He pitched out. Let's take a look at Ryan Dober right here. That's a gamble right there when that ball is hit in front of you. And then you can see Joe Bava right there waving him home. Dolman slid into third. He got up quickly and then saw where that ball was, what happened. Then he scoots home. It's nearly hit Dozier. And so now the Minnesota Twins with a two to one lead and only one out and still a runner on first. And what that does, that gets Glenn Perkins up in the bullpen, the closer for the Twins. This could be two. One there. Pitch, the, thro the uh, throw, the relay was up high. So two are away. As Dozier beats out the relay. And Joe uh, Maurer will come up. There's another mistake right here. This is a tailor-made double play. Green kind of double clutched and then Kepinger he had to get leave the bag that's a Taylor made double play you hope that that doesn't add more runs to the twins understand that green was brought in when he ran for Canerco though mm -hmm. Kepinger was playing second and now he's playing first we won't know if things would have been different Power at the plate. Well, I believe you're at the major league level. I think uh, Green should have known. I mean, he sure. knows he should have turned that double play. Well, he couldn't get it out of his glove. It appeared. Remember well, what, what Robin Ventura was saying to us before the game about defense? Yes. Mauer looks at a low pitch. I don't care what club you you play against. You give a club, especially at the major league level, more than three outs an yeah. inning, you're going to get hurt. This may not hurt him, but throughout the year, it happens. The pitch to Maurer catches the outside corner, and it's two and one. So the Twins have broken through here in the tenth inning with the go-ahead run, and would like to add some insurance. Strike two. One on, two balls, two strikes, two out. And a two to one Minnesota lead. And the pitch way outside. So the runner will be going.
Heppinger playing behind Dozier, so he'll get a good lead. And the pitch. Runner goes. It's slowly to second. Green to Keppinger, and the inning's over. Fox Saturday Baseball will return to Chicago after a word from your local Fox station. So the Minnesota Twins now put the ball in the hands of Glenn Perkins, left-hander, making his sixth appearance of the year, and he'll face Hector Jimenez, who's pinch hitting for Jordan Danks. Well, Perkins with the three saves on the year. That had a home run swing attached to it for Jimenez from Venezuela. Yeah, Jimenez, the backup catcher here in Chicago in his second season. Hey, He's also caught for the Astros and the Dodgers. Perkins pitch it down the left field line and foul. White Sox in the first game of a 10 game homestand after a three and seven road trip. They had hoped that they would get back on track here at home. Got a tremendous pitching performance of Jake Peavy. A couple of mental errors have led to this. They down two to one. Swung on it. Missed strike three, and Jimenez goes down. The UFC returns to Fox tonight. Let's go to Kurt Menefee for a preview. Sunny San Jose, California, the site of our loaded Fox UFC Saturday card later tonight. It's headlined by a champion versus champion main event as Benson Henderson puts his title on the line and welcomes Gilbert Melendez to the UFC. It's Fox UFC Saturday tonight, 8 Eastern, only on Fox. All right, Kurt. Should be a lot of fun right there. Tyler Flowers, one for two on the ball game. By the way, there's a scoring change. The Escobar ball now has been called a hit plus an error on Ramirez. No RBI. And the run is unearned, but it's two to one. Minnesota, nevertheless, pitch up high to Flowers. 
Perkins 30 years old in his eighth season with the Twins. He's kind of always been the setup man waiting for an opportunity to be the closer. He's a setup man for Joe Nathan. He's a setup man for Matt Caps. Now with both those guys gone, it's Perkins that gets the opportunity to save some ball games. Perkins has made more appearances against the White Sox than any other active twin. In relief, 22 games, five starts. On deck, Alejandro Diaz, who gave the White Sox their only run. One and two pitch, just missed. By the Flowers with a lot of weight on his shoulders, and Diaz might be the final out for the White Sox. Here's the pitch. Too far inside. The count goes full of three and two. Come on! Twins play here tomorrow and then go home for a couple. Been away a long time. Three two pitch misses inside and the White Sox have life. Well, I tried the three two slider and it looked like it was over the strike zone. But CB Buckner who had been calling strikes all day long. Call the ball four. So. Flowers will be run for. And Blake. To Cody will come in and run for him. He was just. Just joined the ball club yesterday. Yeah, just activated today when uh, VC Ado was put on a disabled list. And he's looking down at third base saying, I don't know the signs. Help me. <laughs> Darryl, Darryl Boston, help me with those signs. Well, Diaz can make it easy for him. Put it over the wall, and all he has to do is run around the bases. <laughs> Modest lead, and the ball is sky over near the Twins dugout and it'll find the seats. <laughs> By the way, not to make you colder, but the temperature is officially in the 30s. It's 39 degrees. From Minnesota used to this. Well, you live near the North Pole. <laughs> it's usually the breeze that gets to you. <laughs> the old pitch found away by the Ozzers. So even Glenn Perkins, who you know was born and raised in Minnesota, has to blow on his hands. You got two Minnesota kids, battery mates right now, and Joe Maurer and Glenn Perkins, both of them born in St. Paul, Minnesota. Perkins Gordon. went to the University of Minnesota. Joe Maurer signing with the Twins out of high school. Perkins ahead 0-2 to Diaz. Takes this pitch off high. Look, I was born in New York, and it's not exactly sunny and mild 365 days a year, but this has taken me to a different level. It's a little chilly up here. And there's a Twins fan. And a White Sox fan. One two from Perkins to Diaz. Swung on and missed strike three. Diaz hits the bat knowing he couldn't get it done. And that would leave it all up to Jeff Keppinger. Yeah, Perkins uh, picks up his second strikeout just overpowering Diaz. Diaz with a home run in his first at bat. Has struck out four times since. That's 14 White Sox that have gone down via the strikes. Kepinger, the last hope for the Chicago White Sox. And he is 0 for 4 today. Alex Rios should Kepinger reach base. He would hit next. Come on, Cap! Turn the ball! Why do the fans always boo the throws the over the first? <laughs> it's part of the game. 
Cody with good speed. Now he inches off, perhaps another foot further. Pitches up high. Yeah, Tony down in the minor leagues, 110 stolen bases, but he was caught 58 times. And he has good speed. You'd like to get in the scoring position. Twins play Kepinger straight away in the outfield. Here goes the runner to Cody, and the ball is lifted in the air. Drifting over for the final out of the game, and this game is in the books. The Minnesota Twins win the ball game two to one, and the bullpen did a heck of a job. Matter of fact, you can say Vance Worley did a heck of a job, and the home side White Sox fall to Minnesota two to one. Tonight, it's Fox UFC Saturday from San Jose, California. Our coverage starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. Tomorrow, NASCAR on Fox returns with Sprint Cup Racing from Kansas. Coverage begins tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern. For more information on today's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news, log on to foxsports.com on MSN, the world's favorite sports site. For Burt Flylevin, this is Howard David saying so long from Chicago. You've been watching Fox Sports, home of the 2013 Major League Baseball All-Star Game, the ALCS, and the World Series.